Hello, 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 folks. How are we doing? I almost forgot to hit the start button. <laughs> Talking, and then I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> hit start stream. Pro tip. Good day today. Hey, serious rasp and po. Welcome. Beautiful day where I live today. I mowed the lawn after work. That done. Saw a monarch butterfly in my backyard, so that. Hey, Atricia, Chris. Hey, Hazel. Hello, oh, sorry if I'm... Email. Starting in about one minute. Right. Folks, the count the, the counter has counted down. <laughs> so let's go ahead and <laughs> Rebecca got the email just as I was beginning in my MVC. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorcery. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, it looks like I may need to do adjustment of They're behind my head. Let's There we go. Okay. <laughs> Hi folks. Um Hey Davzenega, welcome. <laughs> uh okay, yeah, I can I can mess with my volume settings here a little bit. You're all, okay. Second. Okay, I um back down the gates a little bit. Is that any better? Yeah, is it, is it better now? I uh, backed off the noise gates. Yeah, that's weird. I didn't change anything. Okay, well, let me know if... Um... Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I don't know what changed, but... <laughs> good. Yeah, who knows? Well, <laughs> yeah, didn't change anything, but OBS seems to sometimes just do whatever the heck it wants, right? <laughs> It still doesn't recognize my camera until I restart every single time. So, who knows? Oh well. It's all good. Hey, hey, piece of shoot. Welcome. So, um, I hope y'all enjoyed class yesterday, if you were able to attend. Um, 
<laughs> Rascal says, got a mind of its own. Every Rufio stream, they got to debug the audio on start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so... Um, MBC. Yeah, so I hope y'all enjoyed the MBC discussion yesterday uh, in class. I know it was a lot, right? Um, there was a lot happening, um, a lot that Leon went through um, fairly quickly. Hey, Ski, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the stream. Yeah, well, as Ski mentioned, we are going to talk about MVC tonight. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, just sort of review the like the concepts, the, the MVC concepts, kind of, you know, refresh that in our head. We're just going to do some repetition. I know we just talked about it last night in class, but we got to do that repetition, right? <laughs> hey, I'll be welcome to the stream. And yeah, MVCR technically, yes, because we are involving routers. That's right. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go through the concepts of MVC first, and then we're going to figure out how to um, apply MVC to an existing app that we already built. Um, so a few weeks ago, I don't know, if you, you probably will remember this when you all see this. Um, if you have watch some of my pa some of my past streams um, a few weeks ago we made this to-do list app now this is not Leon's to-do list app and I'll talk about that in a second but um, this is an app that we made together on stream and um, it is you know just fairly simple right it's just making a to-do list you can edit those to-do list items you can delete them um, and you know add edit delete all the crud operations. Um, and there's an edit button that you can click that takes you to another screen where you can edit the items and then confirm your edit. Uh, what should I say? I'll say carrots. And then confirm. And it edits the item, right, as we go. And so this app, we'll look at the code here in just a bit. This app is has a few MVC elements, but really it's not MVC. Um, it's just mostly, it's very simple. It just has a few paid, a couple, couple of views, uh, a mongoose schema and a server.js file really. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this to have a proper MVC structure. So that's easier to modify and edit in the future. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, first off talking about MVC concepts, second off modifying this app. Uh, let's, let me catch up with chat here. Piece of Suit says, I converted a bunch of 100 devs projects to MVC since Leon shared that to-do code a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to get that practice, right? <laughs> Piece of Suit says, I can't stop, need help. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good habit to have, I think. Yeah, the lecture is not due until next Tuesday. So um, as far as the lecture goes, I, 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 I do want to talk about a little bit before we get started, I want to talk about... Um, a couple of you know the assignments that we have coming up that Leon has assigned. Um, so the first off is the code, um, the the to do the to do list code that Leon went over in class last night, which is not this code, right? This is this is my code. They're both to do list apps. They're just different. Um, and so you know Leon shared some new code with us uh, last night, which is a to do list app that has that MVC structure, right? And he went over it. Um, and originally, I know I had said I was going to go over it on this stream. However, um, Leon actually asked that I wait on that, that I not go over his code because he wants to really finish, you know, sort of going over it in class. So don't fret. Don't panic. The fact that I'm not going over his code, you know, is not a bad thing. It's because he really wants, he's going to keep going over it in class, both on Thursday and on Sunday, to make sure that you know, that code, that you've got that down, you understand exactly what is happening. So that's why I'm not going to be talking about his code tonight. We're going to be doing a different project. Um, and so don't panic. If you don't understand it yet, there's plenty of time. You're going to be fine. <laughs> and so, yeah, and then the second thing is the lecture, obviously, right? So the, the assignment for next Tuesday is to do a lecture on NVC and essentially all the components that are associated with that. So, um, 
you know, I'm not going to be doing the lecture for you, <laughs> but on Sunday, um, I may, you know, sort of present my version of that. However, um, I highly suggest that you truly like put the effort and the research into doing your own version as well. So make your own slides, do your own research, because I mean, who knows better than I do that teaching is the best way to learn. And so act like, act like you're me for, you know, and, and make your lecture, talk, you know, talk to it in a mirror, um, talk to somebody on Discord about it. And you will learn so much just by doing your own research and by putting those slides together rather than, you know, waiting on me and then, and then going off of what I've done. Um, Really, I would highly recommend do your research and, you know, prepare something for Tuesday on your own. And then you, we can always, you know, compare notes on Sunday. Um, that's, I'm happy to do that with you. No worries, Goofer. Feel free to lurk. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Aldi. Rascal says so many to-do list apps. How are we to keep them straight? I know we're gonna keep. We're gonna be. We're, we're gonna be doing a bunch more projects too, right? A bunch more pro, uh, crud MVC projects. Yeah, we're 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 gearing up now. We're gonna be just churning them out. Real Scotty says I'm calling mine shopping list. Big brain. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dev. Yeah. And Rebecca, will, I will present a lecture to my pupper about MVC. Yeah, absolutely. Dictate a lecture to your dog or your cat or your bird or the mirror. Like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be to another person if you're not comfortable. Um, but just all, I've, all I'm saying is just do the work, right? <laughs> you like my <Michael. laughs> To-do list is a rite of passion. Indeed it is. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so... Just so we're clear, those are the two things that are, you know, they're kind of on the table right now, right? Is Leon's to-do list code and the MVC lecture. However, Leon is going to be covering his code in class both on Thursday and on Sunday. So you don't got to worry. It's okay. You'll be fine. And then the lecture itself is due next Tuesday. However, so tonight we're going to cover the concepts. We're going to refactor an app um, and that'll give you some good prep, maybe get you off the ground a little bit on this. All right. So with all that preamble out of the way, does anybody have any more questions um, before we get started? Not the mirror, that guy's kind of smug. <laughs> well, Ray Anthony says, I have a long way to go before I can pretend to be you. Well, everybody starts just pretending to be somebody else at the beginning, right? I didn't start out being me, you know, always. I started out on the Discord, you know, answering questions for like two people on the voice channels. And so, you know, everybody starts somewhere, right? You just got to start. Okay, so I'm not seeing any additional questions, but as always, feel free to ask as things come up. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So, um, if you want to go ahead and download the code we're going to be working on tonight, um, you can find it on my GitHub. I'm going to paste the uh, link here in chat. All right, it's that one, Mind Wolf to Do Crud Exercise. So that's the one we're going to be, we're going to be working on tonight. Um, and as you look at it, you'll see it's very simple. So if you feel free to just get that, you know, fork it, download it, I don't care. Um, just get it in VS Code somehow. Um, and I figure you can do that while we're, you know, starting to talk about MVC basics here. Six, those traverse, traverse videos are seven. Yeah, yeah, about 14 hours total. It was a ride. Hey, Frazy, welcome. So one more time, I'll paste the link to the GitHub code we're gonna be working on tonight, or to the, to the GitHub repo we're gonna be working on tonight. And there you go. All right, so I'm gonna assume everybody's gonna get that downloaded. Um, so let's talk about MVC. All right, so just a quick, you know, Cliff's Notes review of MVC. So uh, what does MV MVC stand for? This should be an easy one. I'm gonna pitch you a softball here. Right, yeah, model view controller. Um, not necessarily in that order, right? Um, so I really love this graphic because I feel like it's really simple and it does a great job of breaking down, um, you know, what happens. So <laughs> most valuable cat, indeed. 
That is also correct. <laughs> so yeah, model view controller. So we start out with, um, you know, our person here, our lovely person, and they're using a browser to essentially um, visit certain addresses right in the address bar. You type a URL or you click a button, which takes you to a certain URL, right? Or a certain path. And then what that what happens is, is that path goes into a router and then the router says, hey, this should go here or this should go here. The router is really just saying, all right, where do I need to go next? Where is this path leading? Um, and there may be, you know, multiple routes. Um, and then those routes go into a controller which is kind of the brains of our app, right? And I think the thing that might be a little bit confusing to some folks is that there isn't just necessarily one controller. There can be multiple. Um, and we're gonna see that um, in both, you know, you'll see that in both Leon's code and in the way we're gonna refactor this app tonight is that you can have multiple controllers. Um, the controller is kind of just a sort of a term that describes like, here's the part of the app that's, uh, that's doing the brain work. That's doing the, the, the thinking work <laughs> and, and, you know, so it's, it's, it's making decisions, it's transforming data, it's, it's doing things rather than just routing the data from place to place. The controller is, is, is doing the logic of the, of the backend here and yeah, the business logic <laughs> is every controller, a different file. Um, so, I mean, the way you partition stuff out, I mean, some of it's kind of just a, um, uh, I can't think of the word, um, like a personal decision based on how you want to structure your app. Um, so, you know, you're going to have some kind of like a server.js or an app.js file, um, which is where you're going to, you know, require a bunch of the stuff that you need. You're going to, you're going to set up your middleware, that kind of thing. Um, but you could have, you know, a separate controller for various pages. You could have a separate controller for various, um, types of actions. Um, it just, you know, it, it, just breaking it out in a logical way, it's something you can definitely do. So that way you would end up with multiple controller files. Yeah. And so, you know, the way that we refactor this app tonight might not, you might just be like, well, why are you doing it that way? Like that doesn't make logical sense, you know, to me, or I would have put this in a different folder or something or, or a different file, something like that. And you can absolutely, you know, mix up your, mix up what goes in what files to a certain degree, as long as it fits the MVC structure. Yeah, and so so Hazel J, that's a good point. So we'll talk about like major routes um, when we get into refactoring. But yeah, there's in in what how you decide what goes on what major routes um, could be you know something of a uh, of a decision in itself, right? So yeah, I think we'll see a little bit of that when we refactor our code. Yeah, exactly. Piece of shoot says every company does their own version. And you're going to encounter that. It's um, every company is going to have their own processes. They're going to have their own process documents. They're going to have their own gospel way of doing things, right? And so some of that is just understanding the basics of MVC structure and then not, you know, not getting too hung up on the specifics. Because um, we've already seen that like Leon and Traversy, they do, they do MVC structure differently. And those are just two people, right? Imagine like all the different companies and how they might implement it. Yeah, exactly, Frazy. So the, the OAuth video, um, controllers can be separate pages, also in the same file. It, you know, it's just, like I say, it's it's important to not, you know, get too hung up on like, oh, it has to be in this file. Oh, it has to be in this file. It's more about, do I know what MVC is and how to implement it? Because um, every company does it differently and you don't want to be too rigid or otherwise, you know, you're not going to adapt well to the way that company does things. Um, okay, so that's controllers. We can have multiple controllers, um, you know, and the routes will route to, you know, the appropriate controller depending on where we want to go, depending on what route is being accessed. Um, and that controller is going to do some logic. And then maybe the controller might need to, so, so the controller could just do some logic. Maybe let's say it's just rendering like a, a static page, right? Just a, a static HTML page. And so the controller is going to be like, Oh, they're asking for a static HTML page and it's going to talk straight back to the browser. Boop. So there is a route that goes straight, you know, straight from the browser to the router, to the controller and back to the browser. We you know, there, there can be routes where we don't touch any of this other stuff. However, um, a lot of the time you're also going to be involving views and models. 
So what we just learned about last night is something that can help us with that model element. Um, and what did we use for the model portion? What, what did Leon use for the model portion of his uh, MVC app? What did we use for that last night? Crescent, welcome, Crescent. Yeah, the back end is so fascinating. I agree, Crescent, that's actually my day job. I work as a uh, relational database developer. Um, I work with SQL databases. Mongoose, yeah, so Mongoose. Mongoose helped us do the model part of our MVC. Um, and Mongoose, what Mongoose helped us do is it helped us build a schema that added some additional structure and properties to the data that we're passing into and out of the database. Um, so our model is going to be what talks to the database directly. So the controller sends things through the model and then the model talks to the database. And again, we'll see that in when we refactor the code today. Um, we'll see how the model talks to the database by adding structure to the data, by specifying certain things that the data can and cannot do. Um, for example, re required fields, setting the type of those fields. Like, is it, can it be a string? Can it be a Boolean? Can it be a number? What can it be? And what can't it be? Um, and that talks to the database and then stuff passes back through and back to the controller get all the ORM action. Yeah. And so why do we need Mongoose? We've never used Mongoose before, right? What are some advantages of using um, Mongoose schemas? What are some, what are we, what are some advantages of using Mongoose? Yeah, four or five. That's a great answer. Uh, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, Mongoose can help determine what's allowed to enter the database. Um, it, it gives us a defined schema. Yes, it makes sure the data is, so what schemas do is they help make sure that our data is structured consistently, right? Yeah, it makes our data more defined. Exactly. Um, structure. It can validate the data being entered. Yeah. So if somebody, you know, if, if, a, if a required field isn't being sent for some reason, for example, think about like if you were putting a bunch of um, user data into a database, right? And we're going to get into this when we get into authentication. Um, think about if you were putting a bunch of user data into a database and you had, you know, a, a really vital field like a user ID um, or a user member number um, and that stopped being sent for some reason. Like that's important, right? If you're like a big company and you, you have all these member numbers and suddenly they're not being sent to the database, something is broken. Um, you would wanna have some kind of validation that's gonna warn you and say like, look, these, something is broken here, stop the presses. Um, we gotta fix a problem. So validation can be really helpful in that way. Um, structured data can be really helpful um, in that it, yeah, it fosters consistency, like FOSA said. It fosters consistency, makes sure that if you are accessing the data, you know exactly how it's structured every single time and you don't have to code around a bunch of you know, potential wonkiness. For example, you would, you would always know that if you're pulling back a field, if you specify that field has to be a string or has to be a number, if you pull that field down from the database, you know you're gonna get a string, you're gonna get a number. So you don't have to do any conversion or worry about special characters. So yeah, those are a few examples of why using Mongoose, you know, or some kind of model that talks directly to the database, why that can be um, beneficial for you, especially as your apps get larger and more complex. Yeah. It's a blueprint, yep. Yeah, and you can specify data, to, you know, the types of data you can enter, enums, that sort of thing. Less points of failure when working on a team. Yeah, like Piece of Shoot brought up and like Leon said last night is that we got to start thinking about not just for ourselves, we are building things for a team. Um, so everybody has to know what the components are. Everybody has to have a baseline. And so MVC is great for this. Models are great for this. We're just adding that sort of that, that team um, structure to our code.
constraint. It's also named after a cute animal, and that's always a plus too. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll admit I'm a little biased. I come from the world of relational databases. Um, so the traditional database structure of tables um, and joins and that sort of thing. And so I really like schemas because they they force a little bit of extra structure in the data and having Mongoose be all, having MongoDB just be like, yeah, whatever. Um, it makes me a little uncomfortable. So I like schemas. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, and, and Fival, like Fival said, you don't have to use Mongoose. There's all sorts of things you could do. Um, but for the particular, you know, um, purposes of, of learning MVC and learning structure and learning how to work as a team on an app, um, we're probably going to be using Mongoose going forward. Uh, okay, so I spent a long time talking about models there, but uh, I think it's worth, since, since this is new, uh, I think it's worth, you know, confirming that we know what that is. Um, yeah, Mongoose is still less defined than SQL. It just adds a little structure. Gives me something. Um, <laughs> all right. So yeah, and then obviously we have our database. So we have our database, which is MongoDB in our case. It could be something else. Um, the nice thing about uh, MVC is that potentially, I mean, not saying it would be easy, but potentially you could even, you know, make your databases a little bit modular. Um, and, you know, so it doesn't, your, your backend doesn't always have to be MongoDB. You could be moved to MySQL or something like that. Um, but MVC overall is going to help us be more modular in our construction. Okay, so we've got talked about models. We talked about databases, talked about our controllers, and we talked, uh, let's talk about our views. So um, what are, um, what is what is a view you know, in the case in the in the in the uh, cases where we've used views so far? What 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 have we built um, using views? <laughs> I'm speaking like Liana. <laughs> it's a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We're we're um, or we've we've used we've done it with EJS so far, right? In the Traversy tutorial, we did a little bit of handlebars. It's a template, right? It's a template. It's 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 taking in data from the controller, right? We're taking in data from the controller and we're plugging it into some kind of thing that we're going to want to show the user here. So we, we the view helps us plug that data in. So maybe it's data from the database. We plug that in, goes into the view and we render it out, send it back through the controller, and it displays in the browser. So we got some back and forth here to the view, populate it out, render it, and send it and serve it back up to the viewer. Leon also said, "Pug, yeah, don't don't go don't go, don't go too wide there, Mavi." <laughs> Yeah, and we might not always be sending back HTML. Um, it just depends. But in general, the view is what's going to kind of help us build the thing that we are going to show the end user. And there's lots of different ways like, that we could do that, right? EJS, handlebars, mustache, pug, all those things. Oh, you're good, Driftwood. We're just talking about the basics of MVC. Um, it just in, in general, the basic concepts of MVC, kind of just reviewing what we talked about last night, really nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, MVC is, is really, I think it's going to be really advantageous as we start sitting down with these group projects. Yeah. And so Miss Babel asked a good question there. It's not a... It's not a render correct that happens in the browser. So that's a really great question. So, and I actually, that was something I was going to look into before this stream and then I forgot. So, so if anybody does know, when does the render, so I know that we like, we render like index.ejs, right? That's one of the things that we have in our method. We send it, but we say response.render um, index.ejs say. So when does the render actually happen? Yeah, like like Deep Fried Penguin is saying, um, the rendering happens in the AJS file, but does the browser perform that or the server? 
Does anybody know? I'm genuinely asking. It was something I was going to research before the stream and I forgot. Okay, so Rascal says the render happens once the browser actually receives the EJS or whatever, um, whatever the, the generated HTML is. Okay, so the view engines are, so the view engines, whether that's HTML or, sorry, EJS, handlebars, mustache, whatever, the view engines are generating the HTML and then the browsers render it. So the view generates, so it takes in stuff from the controller, generates HTML, populates our template, generates the HTML, and the browser renders it. Okay. Yeah, so it's, so, so yeah, it does go back to the controller and then to the browser. Oh, we got a hydrate. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for that. All right. So that's the basics. And I think this will hopefully probably become a little bit clearer as we, you know, as we actually get hands on and start working through this stuff. And, you know, you don't like, like I said before, but I'll say it again. We've got a lot more people on the stream now. Um, it's important at this point to not get too hung up on all the details. I mean, questions are great and I, you know, they had some great questions so far, but just focus on the general concepts right now, like knowing what each of these things are. Don't, you don't necessarily have to know everything that happens and every single time and what memory is used for what or whatever, but just know what these are and the general concepts of what they do. Um, and maybe what, you know, what are some of the common things that we see in views? Like we already said, like EJS, handlebars, um, controller, that could be our server.js file, our app.js file, models, that's going to be Mongoose, um, our database, that's going to be um, MongoDB, right? Our routers, a router. <laughs> and then our browser could be Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer if you're, I don't know, 50 years ago. <laughs> Edge, if you're edgy. Um, okay. So any last questions on just the general MVC? Opera. There you go. Because yeah, we are going to, you know, Leon's going to be reviewing this over and over in class. So don't panic if you're still not quite sure about it. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually probably going to, you know, look at the code in the app that I shared with you and figure out how, you know, kind of just strategize on how we could restructure it to fit this MVC structure. Hey, JM. Go ahead, Deep Fried Penguin, you can ask your question. Safari, if you want nothing to work. <laughs> well, so where, did, so where does routing fit in MVC? Um, so the routes are what's gonna help us figure out where things go, right? So does it, you know, is it going to the controller? The routes, the routes, um, you know, do go through the controller, but they're going to help determine like what action gets performed once we hit the controller. Because there's going to, we're going to have, you know, potentially three or four or five different controller files. And so the, 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 uh, we need to know which file to hit depending on the route that's passed in. And so the router is going to help us do that. And we'll see that once we start refactoring is that, you know, we're going to have to do some splitting to figure out where that action should go. What did, what did, you know, what did they click on? Our, our code has no way of knowing what was clicked on without a route. Um, it just doesn't know. It needs to know what action to, to perform and, the, and how it knows that is how it's routed through the code and which, you know, which method it ends up hitting basically. Yeah, the routes are the traffic directors, right? There, or I like to think of it kind of like, you know, a train goes down the, the track and then there's like switching points where it literally forces the train onto one track or another based on like levers. And so the router is kind of doing that for us. It's, it's switching the train onto a different track depending on the action that gets passed through. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's, it's kind of like a, um, a less intelligent part of the controller, I guess.
Um, four five says, how would we go about routing if we don't use a form and we actually have other pages to route to in our app? Well, we'll see that in the code we're gonna refactor today. We'll see that. We have things that are not forms. We're gonna have some buttons. Um, we're gonna have a whole separate page, like you mentioned. We're gonna have a whole separate page where you click a button and it goes to that other page. And so we'll see some different applications of routes. Uh, is homework due Thursday or next Tuesday? Um, the, the lecture, the MVC lecture is not due until next Tuesday. All right, so let's, I'm gonna share with you again, I'll share with you the um, GitHub, the specific GitHub, oh, and Rassel just shared it there too, but you get duplicates. Um, so feel free to download that. You don't have to, like, you're not gonna have to code from scratch. We're not doing anything from scratch tonight. We're gonna take an existing app, we're gonna get it running as is, and then we're gonna strategize and refactor that into MVC. So let me just erase all my scrawl here because we're gonna get some more scrawl. You're gonna to get to see some incredible handwriting tonight, folks. Some incredible uh, mouse-driven handwriting. Um, I don't even have a fancy pencil like Leon does. You're just gonna to get to watch me like try to spell things with the mouse. So enjoy that. Six hour stream, I don't know, we'll see. We're not coding from scratch, which will probably make it faster given how slowly I type. You've all seen that. You know how slow I type. Claim the nuns. <laughs> but only on, I don't know. <laughs> So Scotty, we're actually not going to have any, so this is the, so let's, let's go ahead and just look at this, look at, let's look at the app we're going to touch tonight. Um, and I already have it open here in VS code. Let me make sure I get the right one. I've got several things open. Okay. So let's just look at the basics of the app that we have here. So I'm going to expand these, um, whoop, not node modules. All right. Can you see that? Can you see the folder structure here on the left? Yeah, <laughs> most valuable concept. All right, good. Okay, so let's just look at our app structure here. Um, I'll see if I can make it larger. Uh, I have to go into settings for that. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. All right, there. So that's about as large as I can make it. I hope that's okay. Um, without, you know, losing all my window space here. Uh, all right, so let's look at our structure of the app that we have here. So we have our models and We have, so let's, let's look at our folders here first. So we have models, we have public, we have views, and then we have everything else, which is like our .env, gitignore, package files, and server.js. So the basic concept of the app is pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot here, right? Which is good, right? We want, we want to start simple. Um, so in our models folder, we have a mongoose schema. So we're not gonna go over that just yet, we will. Um, but just know that we have a, in inside of our models folder, which is this component of MVC, we have a mongoose schema already. So that's nice. We're starting off with a mongoose schema. So this part of MVC is good. Um, and then inside of our public, we just have a CSS folder, or C sorry, CSS file. We don't really need to worry about that. We're not gonna touch it at all. Um, and then inside of our views, we have two EJS files. So that's this part of MVC. Perfect, great. Those are already in a views folder. And then we have our .env. And then we have our server.js. Now this is where it gets a little bit more um, dicey, I guess, a little bit more complicated. So right now, literally everything else that's not a view or a model is all crammed together in a single file. 
we have our variables, we have our middleware, we have our MongoDB connection. Um, we have all of our methods for every single action that we can perform in this app. We have our post, we have our update, we have our delete, we have our get. All of this is all crammed together in a single file. Now, what could be a problem with that? I mean, the app works. It, we'll see in a minute, it works. But what could be a potential problem with having everything in server.js? Coffee mouse, yeah, coming in with a, with a good answer there. It's messy, exactly. In short, it's just, it's very messy. Um, there's a lot here. It's not really a separation of concerns. Um, it's all JavaScript, right? It's all, it's all technically kosher to have in here. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's long. It's messy. It's a lot of different things all in one place. And so, and, and, you know, for all these CRUD methods, like, I don't know exactly what page I'm touching at any point. Um, if, if I mess up one thing in one place, I could mess something else up, you know, further down the line. It's very, it's just a, it's just a salad. It's a giant salad. It's all mixed together, right? Get lost in the sauce. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and that's, and uh, Irvin there brings up a really great point. So what happens? Let's say I wanted to add you know, three more pages to this app. And I want to add a bunch more actions. I want to add login. I want to add, um, you know, additional types of edits, that kind of thing. This server.js is going to get so long and it's going to become impossible to work on, right? And DevQuest has another great point. If something breaks in server.js, everything breaks, right? You can't track it down. And people don't want to go through 500 lines of code. Exactly. And Rascal says too, it's difficult. If you were working on this with a team, it would be extremely hard for multiple people to work on this at once and be in the same file and be making edits. If you're trying to, you know, push things up to GitHub, you'd be encountering conflicts all the time versus if you have things in separate files, people can work on different files at the same time and not have those conflicts, hopefully. <laughs> I like noodle salad. <laughs> yeah, I do too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so now we, we kind of know why we might want to implement MVC here. Um, there's one other thing I was gonna mention. So I'm not, and so like we have our views and we have our model kind of already in place, right? But the controller clearly needs some work and we really don't have separate routers at all. So two things we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna split out our controllers into multiple different files depending on the, the type of action that's being performed. Um, and then we're, we're going to need routers that are going to route to the correct place depending on the action that's being requested from the browser. So that's what we're going to be focusing on is setting up the routers and sort of splitting out the controllers to be um, easier to maintain going forward. Okay, cool. So that sounds like a good plan. Um, I'm going to make this a little smaller. There we go. Um, so let's go ahead and just get this app running first and foremost, so we can see what it does. So if you've just, um, cloned down the code or downloaded the zip file or whatever, um, you're going to need to add your .env file and put in your database information. So you, if you, if you built this app with me before, um, you know, you might already just have pulled up that code instead, but if you, if you cloned it down from GitHub, you're going to need to add your .env file. Uh, and I'm going to show you the .env file. Again, my standard disclaimer, I'm showing you my database string on purpose. Um, please don't get into my database. I trust you and I appreciate you. All right. So inside of our .env file, you'll just have a single variable called db connection. 
db underscore connection. You can call it whatever you want. You'll just need to change it in your mongoose connection later. db connection. And you're going to go ahead and paste in your connection string like usual. However, there is one difference. Can anybody see what the difference is in my database string compared to maybe how we've done database strings before? What looks different about my database string? No, it's okay as is. It looks a little funny with the coloring. That's just VS Code doing something. Yeah, a couple of you spotted it. So um, we have right here, we are actually specifying a database name in the string itself. Yeah, lots of you spotted it. You got sharp eyes. Um, so we have our database string just as normal, but between the slash here and the question mark, we've actually specified a database name. Now, previously, when we when, before we before we used mongoose, um, we'd really just you know paste it in the string and left it as is, and then you know went about our merry way and sort of declared the database name later. Um, but I think going forward, what we're going to be doing most of the time is declaring the database name in the string. So that is so that is this is my database name. You could call it something different. Um, it, you know, whatever makes sense to you, really, this is just what I called it, to do tasks. Um, and if you look at Leon's code that we that we um, looked at on Tuesday, check out that env file. And I'm sure he'll talk about this again, but Leon's code that he talked about on Tuesday, check out the env file in, in that code. And you'll see that Leon specified a database name as well. Um, Mongoose is kind of, um, seems to be kind of expecting that. I think you can declare it later, but, um, for, mo for most of the impl implementations that I've seen of Mongoose, you just specify the database name in the string, and then you specify the collection name, you, or you can specify the collection name later on in the schema. So we'll also see that. Yeah, so this is my database name to do tasks. And so if I, if I open up MongoDB, let me just do that. Just to show you. Logging in. There we go. Okay, so if I browse collections in Mongo here, we'll see that, where is it? I have a database right here at the top called to do tasks. And that was created because I specified the database name in my connection string. So if a database doesn't, you don't have to go in here ahead of time and, and manually build out a database called to do tasks or whatever you call it. Once you specify it in the connection string, if it doesn't exist, it will be created for you, which is pretty cool, I think. It's not something that you have to build manually. You specify it in the connection string, you'll create it with Mongo, and as soon as you try to hit it, it will create it. <laughs> Upsert. Yeah, if it doesn't exist, then create it, exactly. Yep, so to-do task is right there, and I already have some things in here, but you won't, obviously. You'll just create it, you'll connect to it, and then you'll be able to start writing to it. Um, so let me make sure I understand your question there, Irvin. So you need your new username and password in the connection string in order for it to actually connect to the data, like to, to your cluster. So remember, there's different levels inside of MongoDB. There's the cluster, which is the biggest, biggest container that you own. And then you can have multiple databases in there. And each of those databases can have multiple collections and each of those collections can have multiple documents. So by default, you're connecting to the cluster with your username and password, and then you can optionally specify a database in your connection string to connect to, which is what we're doing. Right. 
Rascal says, imagine having to manually create each database and collection, so many extra steps. Now in the world of uh, relational databases, I am very used to, you know, doing that create table action and then populating the table later. But uh, I guess I, I, I guess I live life on hard mode, so. <laughs> Yeah, so if, you, if you're not sure where to find your string, um, we can go back to the, to the home page here. So as long as you're logged in here, um, you can go to connect and then just say connect your application. Okay, so connect, connect your application, copy the string and then put in your password in between the carrots. So, so, so this, that whole thing that I have highlighted there, the two carrots and password, replace that with your password, okay? Hey, Kasava, welcome. <laughs> all right, so all we're specifying in the database string here is just the database name. We're not talking about collections yet. We'll get to collections in a minute. But right now we're just focusing on the database name. So just put that in there. I would just suggest calling it to do tasks or something like, you know, so you match with mine and so you don't have to worry about, you know, any differences, you know, accounting for any differences later. Um, but just put the name of to do tasks in your string between the forward slash and the question mark. Cool. Okay. Um, so Rezan, we'll, we'll handle that error in just a second. Um, so I think I know what's causing it and we'll get there in just a sec. Um, okay. So we've got our, um, hey, Cesar, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, okay. So we've got our connection string set up. Don't forget to save that control S, save your .env file, right? Right here. And then what else do we need to do in order to run somebody else's app? for the first time. What do we need to do? If we've just downloaded somebody else's app off of GitHub, we've put in our database string, what else do we need to do? <laughs> NVM install, yeah, exactly. So just in your terminal, just do npm install, just like that. You can see it's the first thing that I did, right? This is my code, but I, do I downloaded it fresh off of GitHub and I just did npm install. So you do that as well. npm install, um, good, good. Yep, fork clone npm install, exactly. And then I also ran npm audit fix. That's optional. It'll probably work without it. Um, and then after that, what you can, so after you run npm install, npm audit fix is optional. That'll upgrade some packages that are out of date. Um, you can also then do npm start to actually run it. I know code monkey probably just joined. Um, I'm deliberately sharing my connection string because there's something in there that we haven't learned about previously. So I am well aware that I am sharing my uh, connection string with you live, although I appreciate you pointing it out. Um, but please don't touch my database. I trust you and I respect you. All right. So try NPM start and see if that works. Now I know at least one person got an error. Now, did you get the person that got an error? Did you get an error after doing npm start where it said something about use, find, and modify? Hey, Dev, you don't got to worry about the collection yet. Don't worry. We don't, we don't specify the collection in the database string. That's not where we do it. So we'll get there, I promise. So if you did get an error when you tried to run, that may be because you're using a newer version of Mongo, uh, or sorry, of uh, Mongoose. And so one thing you could change 
is inside of your todotask.js. Sorry, not there, oh, my bad, sorry. Inside of your server.js, you could um, check and make sure that you don't have a property inside of your connection called use, find, and modify. If you do, you'll have to take it out. So four or five, we didn't, so let's be clear. We didn't name the collection to do tasks. We just, all we've done so far, don't, don't get hung up on the collection thing. We haven't touched that yet. All we've done so far is name the database. The, remember that the database holds collections, right? So all we've done is just done the database. I'll, I'll, I promise I will show you where the collection name gets set, but it's not here. I know, Dev, yeah, but we, we will create a collection. I promise, it's just not here. <laughs> we'll get there, Dev, I promise. It's okay, it's, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> so, hey, Nubish, um, if you're not near a computer, yeah, you can just watch the VOD later, it's okay. Oh, you got it, okay, you got it, Gabo, great. Okay, so I'm gonna assume the folks have their database string in place and that they have done uh, NPM install and that they have also done NPM start. So is your server running? Awesome. So we got so yes, good. We got some successes there. Good deal. Running in first try. Nice. <laughs> first try. <laughs> okay. Hey, Muni Bye. Hey, nice, Champo. Great work. You better catch it, indeed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So um, now what we can do is try and see if you can go to localhost 8000, which unless you specified a different port, that'll be the, that's the port that the code is using by default. Um, see if you can run it on localhost 8000 and it's the homepage should look something like this. So deep fried, check your, um, check your terminal and see if you have an error. If localhost 8000 isn't working, then you may have an error in the terminal. So see what that is. And if you are getting an error, let me show you how to, um, well, I don't have a really good, uh, I don't have an error here to show you, but uh, if you're getting, <laughs> if you're getting an error in the terminal, scroll all the way up to just below where you put in your NPM start. And that will tell you what the error actually is. If you look at the bottom of the error, it's not going to tell you nothing. You got to scroll up to the top, just below where you put in your first, where you put in your NPM start and trigger the error. That'll tell you what the problem is. Yeah, and, and, and for the purposes of this exercise, like Rascal posted, use the, the code in my GitHub, okay? So that's what we're going to be refactoring tonight. So don't use Leon's code. Use the code in the link that Rascal just posted in chat. Because Leon's code is different. It's more complex. We're going to be doing something simpler tonight. So if you want something simpler, <laughs> use my code. We all want simple, don't we? So deep fried, make sure that you saved your .env file. Um, make sure that you saved your .env file. Double check that your password is correct. Um, Yeah, so Champo and Deep Fried, you, you may not be authenticating correctly. It may be trying to time out. Because, yeah, it should open mostly instantaneously. It's a really simple app, so there's not a lot going on there. Okay. 
yeah uh yeah, uh, Moonabyte. So this is JavaScript. Yep, this is JavaScript with Express. Um, so this is a nice, fairly easy way to build full stack web applications. We're using MongoDB as our back end, and we're using EJS as our front end, or sorry, our, our, our template engine. Yeah. Okay, so Champo and Penguin, I would suggest resetting your password and um, you know, in MongoDB and reset the password, give it a few minutes and then um, try that because your password may be wrong. Mern stack, yeah. <laughs> okay, so real quick, let's, um, let's just review the functionality of this app and it will not take long. <laughs> it's a very simple app. That's why I like it. It's good for refactoring because it is simple. Um, all right, so all it is is just a to-do list we have a title, we have a content. On the main page, what we can do is we can um, just put the title of a new task. So what should, what should my task be? What should my new task be? What's, what's, the, what's the title of the task? We call it just um, learn MVC. There we go. <laughs> Review MVC. Uh, concepts and refactor some existing code. There we go. All right. And so once we've done that, then we can say add task. And once I do that, my task is written to the database, right? And when I click that add task button, what type of operation is being performed? What type of CRUD operation is being performed? Yeah, it's a post, right? Because we're creating a new item. Yep. But I can do also do other things here. And so, uh, yeah, Dev Dipper, um, all you need to do is just run npm install. That's all you need. You don't need the specific packages. It'll just read what's in package.json and install it. So you don't need anything else, just npm install. And same for you, Rizon. You don't need the whole, you don't need the whole list of dependencies because they're already in package.json. Um, Node is smart enough to read those and install them for you. Oh, to get the app, just go to localhost 8000. That's the port. NPM install is great, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Raison, so to start the app, you just do NPM start. All right, so we've done a post to add, um, we've done a post to add a new task, right? And then we can also do other operations. So uh, what we can also do is we can edit so if I click this little button here, we edit and watch what happens. So when I clicked on the edit button, what did it do? It, it, it took me to a new page, right? This is a brand new page. And look at what's in the URL. I'm not saying this is best practice. Just look at what, what's it, what do we see in the URL here? It routed me, right. This is a route, right? The route, I, you probably can't read that, it's very small, but it says localhost 8000 slash edit, and then it's passing through the ID of the item that we want to edit. So that's important, that's a route. That's telling our app what it specifically needs to do in that moment. And so what it needs to do is it needs to go to the edit route, and it needs to specifically allow us to edit the one item that we clicked on, right? So it's configuring the page, it's configuring the EJS to only allow us to edit this item right here, the one that we clicked on. If I click on the edit button for a different item, it needs to let me edit that one, or this one, or this one, right? And each time I do that, my route changes, it keeps, the, it keeps the edit route, right? But it passes a different ID 
So we are literally directing traffic within our app to tell it what to do. Yeah, it's with an ID, exactly. So, so the ID is unique, and so it will only ever match to a single item in the database. And so that's why we can do this. And then, so I can, I can, you know, don't forget the treats and chew toys for the dog. So I can click the confirm button. And what, what happens when I click confirm? What, what operation is being performed when I click confirm here to update this? What do you expect? What do you expect will be done to the database? Now there's a couple of operations that start with P there, P is the shoot. <laughs> it's a put. Yeah, it's a put, exactly. Because we're updating something that already exists. So I can do that. It takes me back to the home page and my my task is updated. Put update, exactly. Um, I can also, that's so we've done create. We've done read because we're reading down the tasks into our um, page here. We've done update. And then the last one is delete, right? So if I click the X, it deletes that item. And each time I do that, a different route is being passed up here in the browser, right? You can't see it because it happens so fast. But each time I perform an action, we're literally passing a route into the browser which then goes to our server and is and the appropriate method is performed based on that route. Yeah, we, we, we will take a break here in just a minute. I just wanted to finish um, reviewing the functions of the app as it is. And then, yeah, we'll take a break. We'll let folks maybe, you know, get their stuff up and running if they're having trouble. Um, and we'll take five minutes for that. Did the screen, oh, that's a great question there, Spoofy Boy. Um, did the screen, did the screen refresh on the post put request? Yes, it did. Um, and you can't really see it, it's just so fast. Um, but it does, it, it because it, because the, um, the template has to essentially be rebuilt with the new data in it, um, and then resent to the browser and displayed. So, yep, that's a great catch there. And we'll see that in the code, we'll see how it, how it refreshes. And sometimes it doesn't just refresh. Sometimes, depending on the action, um, if I click this confirm button, it's also redirecting, right? It's rerouting us back to the home page. So sometimes there's multiple things happening. There might be a um, you know an update made to the database and a new page is shown to the user, right? So multiple things can happen at once. Um, it just depends on the route, right? Okay, so uh, I think the app is pretty straightforward. Um, we'll go ahead and take a break here, let folks kind of maybe work out some kinks. Um, and I'm going to move this over here. Is a model the same as a service? I'm not sure what a service is. Um, if somebody else would like to field that one, they absolutely can. So with a... so. Um, with a redirect, you could potentially be going to like a different page, like like with a redirect, like you might be just going back to like home, um, to like the home route, which could be performing other actions as well. Um, and so like, for example, we'll see that when we redirect to the home route, um, after doing an update to an item, we also need to hit the database again first to grab the updated data. So we, we go back to the root, but we're doing multiple things when we do that. We aren't just re-rendering the page. We also have to go back up to the database, grab the updated data, and then pass it into our view and render the view again. So multiple things are happening there. Okay, so, and, and, uh, Oh yeah, so we can see here it also even it also passed my uh, my new task there into the console. I must have a console log somewhere. I don't remember where it is. <laughs> All right. Oh, Jason, you got it. Awesome. Way to go. So yeah. So be careful with your connection string. 
look at mine carefully, right? When I put in my password, I took out, so like as Jason saw, if they, or Jason, if, sorry, um, if they didn't take out the carrots around the word password, and so then, then it didn't work. Yeah. You had to change the port. Okay, that's great, Champo. Yeah, if you have something else that's blocking your port, it might not load. Um, awesome, way to go. Good, good troubleshooting, guys. That's awesome. No, hey, Jason, we all make mistakes, right? You're always, no way, rookie or experienced dev, you will make mistakes forever. And it's just something, you know, it's just something you live with. We all have those like face palm moments where you're just like, I cannot believe I did that. <laughs> Traversy, yeah, exactly. Traversy does, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and take our break. Good troubleshooting, folks. Um, and the best news of the evening, my friends, look what has returned in a glorious fashion. It's the Google timer, my friends. It's back. I'm so happy. After a long absence, it returns. All right, with that being said, let's start this wonderful timer and I will see you back in five minutes. Oh, last thing. And when, so when we come back, just so you know, when we come back, we're actually going to start strategizing about how to turn this code into MVC and kind of pull it apart. So that's the plan when we come back. All right.
Okay, folks, come on back, come on back. Hi, just another Gratz. <laughs> Oh yeah, so folks are discovering that passwords um, that have symbols in them um, maybe sometimes aren't the best. I like to auto-generate, I like to have MongoDB auto-generate my passwords for me. Um, so that way I don't have to worry about special characters because yeah, they can be a beast. Hey, Gratz, I'm sorry. Yeah, I still haven't uploaded the Traversy tutorial to YouTube. I, I, I will do that. It's just gonna take like eight hours. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna take so long all right i'm gonna stop this hey wjs welcome <laughs> good to have you here all right so if you weren't able to get connected it's okay it's not the end of the world you don't really have to be coding along with me tonight um if you prefer, you're perfectly welcome to just kind of, you know, strategize along with me um, while we build this out in a logical way. Um, and in the end, you know, I will, I'll upload this code to GitHub so you can, you know, take a look at the finished thing. Um, but yeah, you do not, coding along with me tonight is not a requirement. Um, so if you aren't able to get it running, it's, it's not a huge deal. Um, I'd rather that, you know, you, you know, participate in the in the discussion about the the refactoring and and you know strategize along with me rather than you know struggling just to to get the the initial code running uh, out of the two that's the one I prefer so um, yeah again no worries if you weren't able to get it running you'll have plenty of practice in order to you know build these MVC type apps and get them running as we as in the months and weeks ahead <laughs> so don't worry too much about it all right hey unicorn okay so. As we said earlier, we're mostly gonna be focusing on the controller and the router. All right. Because as we saw earlier, as we saw earlier, and we'll talk about that. So Jay Nunes, if you're just trying to get the app running for starters, oh, I need to turn my cam back on, sorry. Um, if you're just trying to get the app running for starters, just put it right here. You see where mine is, just in the root. We're gonna move it in a little. We're gonna move it a little later, but for now, you can just put it in the root to get the app running. Um, hey Dev, just do npm start. npm start. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. So just drop it in the root for now. Um, and Yeah, so like we talked about earlier, we're going to focus on the controller and the router most of, for most of the work that we're going to be doing this evening. Um, and if we look in our um, server.js, as we said before, it's pretty crowded, but there's a few like low hanging items of low hanging fruit that I could probably um, pick off and sort of move off into their own folders. Um, one of them being my mongoose.connect. Now we're pr most of the time we're pretty used to having our connection statement inside of our server.js itself. Um, but again, that's one of those other things that we can parcel off elsewhere if we want to. So it's not taking up extra space inside of our server.js folder. Um, Mommy said, hey, it connected, had the wrong password. Ah, oh, classic. <laughs> that happens, yeah, that happens to me too. Yep. So let's just, just to get a little practice on how we can move things to separate files, let's practice by moving our connection statement into a different location. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is over here in my folder structure on the left, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called uh, config. This isn't strictly like MVC, but this is just something that I see a lot is that they don't want people just don't want their connection statement just cluttering up their main folder. Yeah, so Dev, you still got something going on there. That's okay. Like I said, I would just maybe um, 
maybe just stop with the troubleshooting for now and just kind of follow along. You can always update your code uh, without it running. You don't have to get it running. Um, so like I said, I would prefer if you're still stuck at this point, just, you know, hold off on the troubleshooting for now and follow along with, you know, the, the course of the, you know, kind of the, the concepts of what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've got a new folder here called config and in here is where I'm going to put my database connection information and my .env file. So I'm just going to kind of like shift things out of the main server.js to make it a little less cluttered and we're just going to kind of move this in here. All right. So first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is move my .env file into my config folder. So I'm just going to drag that bad boy in there and drop it. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to? And I'm going to say yes. And now it's in there. Perfect. So now that we've done that, we are going to have to make one adjustment. Sorry, I'm just making sure that I can know what that adjustment is. Um, we're just going to now we're just going to have to tell our server.js where to find that now because we moved it out of the root. So all I need to do is in my .env.config statement, all I need to do is just specify the path where my code should find that .env file. So I can, inside of this config statement, which we've always left blank before because .env has been at the root up until now, I'm just going to say, path config oops config slash dot env so just as simple as that very simple change it's a little bigger just specifying the path where that .env file is located now. And if you're not, if you get confused on this, it's, if you look at Leon's code from Tuesday, it's in there as well. You can just copy and paste. Yep, path, config, env. Oh, and I forgot there is a dot here as well. My apologies. Basically what this is saying is just, hey, go up one folder, go into the config folder, and you'll find the env file there. That's all that's doing. Okay, so we've gotten that out of the root, so it's a little cleaner now. Uh, and now the other thing we're gonna do is, like I said earlier, move our connection into our um, config folder as well. So how do we do that? Let's create a new file inside of our config folder and we'll call it database.js. Okay, so database.js. Now, when I create a new file and I want to use, um, and I want to use a certain dependency in that file, what's the first thing that I always have to do? If I want to use a, a, a package or a dependency or whatever inside of that file, what do I need to do first every time? I need to require it, right? And what am I going to be requiring in this file? What what's what what am I going to be using in this file? To connect to the database. Mongoose, indeed, right? So, I'm just going to keep it simple and just say const mongoose require Mongoose. Okay. Const mongoose require mongoose. Now I can use mongoose here and Express will recognize it. All right. So now I know that some folks were, were, were having issues connecting to mongoose because they were not getting any errors in the terminal, right? The terminal was telling them nothing. And then you try to go and load the app in the browser and it doesn't work. So if we look at our mongoose connection statement as it is right now, I'm just going to copy and paste this into my, so I'm just going to grab this and paste it into my database.js file, boop, as is. What's a potential problem 
that we can see with this statement as it's currently written that might be causing that issue where it says it console logs connected to database, but it doesn't work. Yeah, we're essentially, so what's happening here is we're essentially going to console log that it's connected no matter what, whether it works or not. <laughs> so regardless of whether this connection is successful, yeah, then that, that, that could be a problem. So we are, I do want to rewrite this just a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do... Yeah, so so the 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 models to do task that being uppercase that shouldn't matter, but you can make it lowercase. It's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to rewrite this connection statement a little bit. And so some of you that are having trouble connecting, this might help you. So if you're still troubleshooting, stop troubleshooting for a second and just pay attention to this. And we're going to rewrite this connection statement, which may help you. Um, not saying it will, but it might. It might at least give you better error messages. <laughs> All right. So we're going to rewrite this connection statement so that it actually waits for the connection to be successful and throws an error if it's not successful. Uh, all right. I'm going to push this down a little bit lower. And I'm going to do const. I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call it connect DB. Now, why would I maybe, why, um, why wouldn't I just do mongoose.connect again? Why am I making a function? Oops. Why would I want to make a function in this separate file? Yeah. So I can export it and so I can call it in server.js, right? Okay, so inside of here, what we're gonna do is we are gonna do a try catch. And if there's an error in our connection, we wanna, we wanna catch it and we want to console log that error. So for those of you that are having trouble, this may help you if we console log the error and we stop the process from running so it doesn't just load forever. So I'm going to do that, catch the error, console log it, and exit when we're done. And you can use async await with, um, with, with Mongo Connect. I, I looked at the documentation. Async await does work. Um, it may, it, VS code may, may, may give you a little message or whatever saying it does it's not needed, but it is, you can use it. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. I actually read documentation for this. <laughs> and also too, if you are, if you, if you're starting to get hung up here and you're not sure what I'm doing, you can also look at Leon's code from Tuesday and literally look in his database.js file and just copy this whole thing. It's, you can do that as well if you prefer. All right, so now we can do our connection and I'm going to do const connection. I'm going to await mongoose.connect and into there, I'm going to pass my database string process.env. And what did I call my database string? I called it db connection. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pass it into my connection. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You're right, Crescent Cleaver. Yep, we're, we're creating a function. We're going to export that when we're done, and then we're going to call it in server.js. So instead of having all this connection nonsense in our server.js file, we're putting it off in its own file, and then we are going to connect to it in server.js. Okay, so got my connection there, db connection, 
And then once once that await is uh, fulfilled, then only then are we going to console log uh, I'm just gonna say MongoDB, not DB, MongoDB connected. And con dot connection dot host. And this will just tell us the cluster that we're connected to. So it'll double confirm that we are absolutely connected. It's not gonna lie to us. It can't lie to us. Um, and so if you're having trouble getting connected, this is what you need to do. Okay, so after we've done that, we've created our function. Now, what's the next thing I need to do in order for me to be able to use this function to call this function in other parts of my code? It doesn't just have to be in server.js. I could make, I could want to call it other places as well. Yeah, we're gonna need to export it, right. module.exports, connect db. Okay. So I've saved that. And now I can get rid of this mongoose.connect statement, the original one. Got rid of that. I'm exporting this. I'm going to save it. And now I can call connect db from elsewhere in my code. And so we're going to call it from our server.js file. Okay. So some of you asked about, there's some additional properties. I think in Leon's code, there may be some additional properties here in the connection. I think Leon is using a very old version of uh, Mongoose. And those properties, like the ones that are in the brackets after the connection string, like so, like in here, like there's a, there's properties in here, those are no longer required. Um, so we'll, we'll see that here in just a second. You might actually get errors if you try to use them. Um, Mongo, you know, Mongoose has changed since Leon built that app. Um, so yeah. Uh, all right. So we've got this built, saved. I'm going to go back to my server.js and I'm going to get rid of the original connection string. And I'm going to call instead, I can just call connect DB. Boop. Okay. All right, so and the last thing also that we need to do is we need to sorry I was one just checking one thing here uh, I don't think we also another thing we didn't talk about was setting our um, also requiring this connect DB function right up here up top. So the last thing you'll need to do before you can call connect DB in your server.js is also require it up here up top. So we built it, right? We exported it. Now we need to require it inside of our server.js. So all we did up here is just say connect DB require config database. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And then you'll call it. And because you're, you're, because you're running the function right now, you have to, you need the parentheses after it in order for it to run. Uh, yeah. Four or five. What would you like me to explain? So I'll save this. 
And now, what, see, so I, I'll go back to the database in just a second. I just want to show you one thing. So look at the difference. Previously, the console log came immediately, right? Once I hit NPM start, or once, once my server started, the first thing that was written to the terminal was immediately connected to DB. It was too fast, right? It was just console logging, regardless of whether or not it was connected at all. And now the server starts up first, and then my connection is established. Okay, so I'll go back to database.js. Uh, we don't need .env in our database.js fatcat. Uh, the server is able to read that and pass in our connection string through process env db connection. So fatcat, we don't need .env. This is all we need. Everything that's in this window right now that you can see, that's all you need. Yeah. Because we, because we specified that we're using .env inside of our server.js controller, it was able to say, oh, I know what this means. I know what process.env means. That means go to the env file and get our database connection. You only import what you're going to use. Exactly, piece of shoot, yeah. Okay, so now what this is doing is it's forcing our connection to be successful, and if it's not, then it's gonna throw an error. Well, Champo, that's good. Now that you're getting an error, that's good because um, that's showing that this error is working, that this, this error handling is working, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing that we've done is we've taken we've taken our that long connection information out of our server.js and we put it in its own file. And the two things that we did in order to make that successful, the two things that we did in order to make that successful is we changed the location of our um, .env file and we specified the new path right here. So require.env config and then we set the path. And then we also required the new function that we just created called connectDB. We required that in our server.js file. So that may be something that you might be missing as well if you're having trouble with this. Yeah, so Anon, I'm glad you're getting that error. So now you, you weren't getting that error before, but now you are because your connection string is wrong. Either your variable, maybe check your variable names, make sure they're the same, but there's definitely something wrong with your connection string. Yep. Okay, so ConnectDB is moved over now, perfect. Now let's think about what we can do to kind of clean up this um, clean up this really messy server.js file a little bit because there's a lot in here right now we've got a lot of tasks we got gets we got posts we got puts we got you know creates and stuff it's very um, it's very messy it's very long and very confusing so what we want to do is we want to split these out into separate controllers right separate controllers and we also want to route to them using separate routers. So let's take a minute and just kind of talk this out a little bit. Um, so some of the tasks that are being performed, what are some of the tasks that are being performed? When I first um, render my homepage here, what's the first thing that's happening? Yeah, it's doing a get, right? It's doing a get request, and it's also just straight up rendering the home page, right? <laughs> yeah. So the first thing, the first, really the first thing it's doing is it's rendering the the EJS to you know to display the home page, and it's also hitting the database to get a list of existing items, right? But first, <laughs> yeah, and it's displaying all the tasks in the collection exactly. Um, 
And what is another major feature of my homepage here? Yeah, so obviously we're gonna have to have some kind of route to the root, right, to the slash. We're gonna have some kind of route for that. Uh, we're gonna need to have some kind of route to get the, the stuff from the database. Um, yeah, and, and another major feature of this page is the add task, is the add task um, functionality. You know, it doesn't really matter how it's happening, whether it's a form or input boxes or what, we're gonna need some kind of route for adding a task. Okay, and I would say those are the main unique features of my homepage. Um, and, and yeah, there are some, there's some additional things here. We can edit and we can delete, but I wouldn't say those are necessarily like unique. Um, again, this is more of, this is kind of a judgment call, right? It's like those, the edit and the delete button, they both exist on the homepage and on the edit page. So they're kind of multi, they're kind of multi-use. Um, I would say the main unique features of my homepage are, um, you know, first like displaying it, um, are, and, and, you know, displaying it with the, with the things it needs to display, the, the things in the, um, in the database and also adding tasks. Yeah. Um, so that could maybe be, let's like, maybe we could think about that as being a controller. So we could have, now you get to watch me write with a mouse. So <laughs> I don't have a pencil. All right. So we could have a controller that's maybe like a, um, like a home, like a home controller, right? We'd have a home controller. And then we can maybe have another controller which handles like the edit functionality. So like the, the other things in the CRUD sequence, right? So like the updates, the deletes, um, all these other things that we could potentially do. So I'm thinking maybe like two controllers. So we have like a home and then an edit, <laughs> home and edit. That was flawless, thank you. I'll show the database again in just a minute here, Bumbley. Yeah, here, I, I can show, I can have it on this screen while I'm talking. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, like maybe a home controller and an edit controller. And so we're also gonna need some routes, right? That are gonna, that are gonna route us to those controllers. Um, and so just to keep things simple for our router, I think we're also probably gonna have a home router and an edit router. Better than Leon's writing with an Apple pencil. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, he does have some uh, impressively uh, indecipherable handwriting. He should have, he should be a doctor. I mean, man, just a, just a man of many talents. <laughs> yeah. My, so my, uh, uh, my dad is a doctor of veterinary medicine and yeah, his handwriting is pretty terrible too. So <laughs> engagement. <laughs> Coffee mouse says, so we have as many controllers as we have routers. Well, in this case we will, we're just keeping things simple and trying to keep things very simple and, and comprehensible. I can't say that that's something that you will always have, but in this case, that's, we're going to have that um, just because we want things to be very simple um, and, very clear. So yeah, we're going to have two route, two uh, router files handling different routes. And then we're also going to have two controllers, one for the home, which is really just going to do like the, um, the, the, the initial render and the, um, the add functionality. Um, and then we're going to, the edit is really going to handle all the rest of the CRUD operations, you know, editing, deleting, um, you know, confirming those deletes that, that confirming those, uh, edits, that kind of thing. So, and again, that's, that's, I'm not saying that that's the, the best way to do it. Um, some of this stuff can be subjective. Um, that's the word I was looking for that I couldn't remember earlier. Some of this stuff can be subject, subjective, but it's more about just learning how to implement the concepts, right? <laughs> uh, okay. So I think that's going to be kind of our general structure. 
Uh, and we already have our views. So that's done. We already have our model and we'll talk about the model in a minute. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure I'm accounting for all the structural things here. Controllers, models. Because yeah, I think that's the 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 MVC and MVC. I think we covered it all. Uh, so Bombaloni, did you figure it out then? Is that what you're telling me? I'm not quite sure if you're asking me to do something there, Bombalini, or if you're uh, telling me that you figured it out. <laughs> okay. Oh, hydrate. Ah, no, I don't want to leave without saving. All right, I'm going to hydrate real quick. Okay, so let's start putting these together. Let's start building out our structure so that we can start putting things in the appropriate places. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, minimize my config for now. Um, I'm gonna create a new folder. Oops, not inside there. Uh, I'm gonna create a new folder at the root called controllers. And another new folder called, you guessed it, routers. Or sorry, routes. And those are where I'm gonna put my controllers and my routes. <laughs> you missed where I defined connected? Okay, I'm not still not quite sure what you're saying there, Bombaloni, but I'm, uh, I guess you moved on, so I guess you figured it out. Awesome, <laughs> good work. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, we've got our two new folders. We've got controllers and we've got routes, and that's where we're going to put our controllers and our routes respectively. Um, so inside of there, uh, inside of controllers, I'm going to go ahead and create two new files. I bet you can't guess what they're called. Edit.js and home.js. And then in routes as well, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, again, here we're getting into some, you know, duplicate um, file names, right? We're going to have a couple duplicate file names. It's okay. Um, you could also change these to be more descriptive if you wanted to. But we're just going to, we're going to kind of have a couple of duplicates here for now. Um, just note that they are in different folders, so that's okay. Yeah, you could call them edit routes or, um, you know, we're, we're going to define them a little bit more specifically uh, when we actually get into the routing part of it. Um, but the files are going to have some duplicate names here. Okay, so I'm just going to close these up for now. Close my .env file. Okay, and... So I've set up my location for my controllers and for my routes. And now I actually want to start setting up my sort of routing architecture that's going to handle the requests that come, come in from the browser, right? Each time you click on something or each time you visit a particular URL, you're sending a, recrout, a route from the browser into your server, which is listening. And so we need to set up the appropriate routing that can handle those routes that we're passing in. MMB Cotton, is it always one route file per controller or vice versa? We're just doing it this way just to, to keep it simple. I'm not going to say that it's always going to be one to one. Um, I Honestly, I don't know enough about this to tell you. Um, we're just going to keep it simple by keeping it one to one to make it very relatable and easy to follow. Okay, so let's let's do a little bit of configuring on our server.js. All right, so what we're gonna do is, make sure I get things in the right order here. So I'm actually gonna move my connect.db function. I actually kind of put that in the wrong place. I wanna move it above my middleware. All I'm doing is just changing the order here. Just doing the database connection first, then setting some middleware, which is already there, 
And then after we set the middleware, I'm going to set my routes. Okay, so for my routes, I'm going to say app.use. And if I want to hit the home route, I essentially want to be listening for that home route as soon as I, as soon as the user goes to the home page of my app. So if I, what route do I, what, uh, what route do I want to be listening for if I want to um, go to the, the home routes folder? So if I want, if I want to direct the server to send me to this home.js routes folder, what route do you think I should be listening for? Or sorry, what path do you think I should be listening for? Yeah, exactly. Lord Super Astro coming in with the first time chat and the right answer. I love it. Yeah, we're going to be listening for the root, right? So listen for that. And then direct to our home routes. Okay, and we're going to require these in a minute. We're going to need to require them, but I'm just writing them out for now. And then if I want to... If I want to perform an edit action on uh, on something in my uh, in my app here, what's a route that I could maybe listen for if I wanted to perform an edit action on something in my app? Yeah, slash edit seems like a pretty good choice, doesn't it? So any route that gets passed in with slash edit, we want it to go to the edit routes. And then parse it farther from there. So, so any, any route that comes in at all from the browser that just has a slash and then something, that'll go to the home routes. And any route that comes into the browser with slash edit, or that comes in from the browser with slash edit, will go to our edit routes. So let's see an example of that. Um, so I'm gonna go to my edit, sorry, I'm gonna go to my index.ejs. And I know there's a lot here, but we're gonna ignore most of it. And I can see right here that I have a few different routes that I'm passing in. So this is that edit button. Essentially, this is um, this edit button right here in my um, index.ejs file. This edit button right here is already passing in a route of slash edit slash something. So when this route gets passed to my server.js, what that's going to do now is going to say, oh, here's an edit route that's coming in. I recognize that edit route. So I'm going to go to the edit routes file, which is right here and do something else. And we'll, we'll follow all these routes through after we're done building them. It's okay if it doesn't make sense right now. We're gonna follow all these routes through after we're done building them and track them like manually as we go. Okay. So edit is gonna go to the edit routes and do something there. And root is gonna go to the home routes. Perfect. So the last thing that I need to do in order to tell my server.js that it should be using home routes and edit routes and routing to this certain folder, I just need to add a require statement up top here in my declaring my variables, declare variables section. I just need to add a routes section up top. Or sorry, I need to require home routes and edit routes. Okay, so what might that statement look like? If I say const home routes, what might that statement look like? Require, what am I gonna be requiring? 
you can kind of use some of these um, other um, statements up here to maybe um, get, a, get a feel for it. Yeah, exactly. We're going to require routes home. Require. And then we're going to just put the path to the location we want to go. Require routes home for home routes. And then for edit routes, it's going to be very similar. Require routes edit. Okay. So it's going to crash. It doesn't have all the things it needs yet. It's okay. That's an expected crash because <laughs> the router is looking for stuff that doesn't exist yet. That's okay. So your app is probably going to be crashed for a little while until we, until we build this out a little bit more. So home routes require routes home, edit routes require routes edit. And so that way our server is going to know exactly where to send us when either of these paths come in. Controlled crash. Yeah, it's a controlled crash. It's all good. Yeah. And so you might say, well, why did I only put like two routes here, right? Like, why are there only two routes here? We're going to have a ton of different routes. We're going to have routes for when we click the X and when we have the, um, you know, and, and when we click add task and when we render the page. And I mean, all those, there's going to be, you know, a bunch of different routes. So why do I only have two in my server.js file? Why do I only have two routes here? Oh, hey, I'm Drez. Sorry, I didn't see your message earlier. Um, you took a piece of code from the tutorial and you've solved the problem of targeting routes by ID. Nice. And now your project is working. That's perfect. That's awesome, MD Res. That's what I like. I like it when people can use parts of my code to make their code work. Well, so essentially what we're doing here is we're creating like a tree. We're starting a tree. So a tree starts out with one trunk, right? And then it might split off into two branches and then it might split off into more and more. And so what we're doing here is just the initial split. So basically the first thing we're doing is we're just saying, all right, our one request comes in and if it starts with just the slash with nothing after it, then we're going to send it to the home routes folder. However, if it comes in with slash edit, then we're going to send it to the edit routes folder. Yes, exactly right, Lord Super Astro. Yes, we are going to be splitting into additional routes in the home and edit routes folder. So this is just the start. This is the initial split, and then we're going to be splitting more. Route section, indeed, a little bit, not, not a lot. It's going to be it's going to be pretty straightforward, but yeah, so we're, this is just the initial split. And then each of the home routes and the edit routes location are going to have more routes inside of them, which are going to go to our controllers. Okay. So Dinko says, do you recommend using double or single quotes for string with JavaScript? It really doesn't matter. Some cases it does. Um, I generally, I mean, you can tell I'm using both here, right? I'm using both here, you know, double here, single here. I tend to prefer single, um, but I, it depends on if you copy and paste something, you know, you might copy it with, with, you know, double. So, <laughs> all right. So that's why we only have two routes here because we're just doing an initial split and we're going to have more routes in each of these folders. Yeah. It only takes one key press to do single quotes. Exactly. Okay. So we do that. And then inside of these routes folders, we're going to have initial routes, which are going to call on, which are going to send traffic to the, the two files in our controllers folder. Because if we go back and look at our image here again, right, our router, which we're building out now, is going to send requests to different components of our controllers. So we're building out the routers now. It's going to send stuff to our controllers different parts of our controllers. In this case, we have two controller files. It's going to send up to different points, points in those files. 
and then perform additional operations from there. Oh, can anybody, sorry, I missed, I missed that earlier. Can anybody tell me why we need the single period in the beginning of the path string? Well, in this case, what we're doing is we're just backing out one level. We're, we're going up one level, right? Because we're in our server.js file. So we're going up to the root and then we're going into the config folder and then, you know, or into the routes folder and back down. So dot dot, if you see dot dot, it backs up twice. In this case, we're, we are, we're, we're just backing up to the root and then back down again because we're inside the server.js folder, right? We're inside, we're inside the server.js file right now. So we need to go up one to the root and then back down into the folder. Does that make sense? Hope you like my hand motions. I'm going to be doing that a lot. Okay. So we've set up our initial split. Now let's set up some individual routes inside each of these folders. So we'll start with home routes because that'll be smaller. Let's see, it's about time for a break, but let's just look at home routes. Um, let me just take a look at that real quick and see how much is in there. Okay, that one's really short. So we'll just do that one. Yeah, Alejandro, so MVC, you're right. Everybody has different criteria. There is no right answer. It's really just about understanding the basic concepts. What is a model? What is a view? What is a controller? And understanding why we use it, right? So it might be a headache, but there are valid reasons to use it. And so you're going to have to just practice until you get comfortable with it, right? It's going to be weird at first and like, oh my God, I don't understand. But you will have to practice and get comfortable. Um, and that'll just come with time. I, you know, you're not going to get this right away. Uh, all right, so let's look at our home routes. And inside of home routes, what were the what were the two things that we basically said um, we kind of we, we thought we might put in our home routes folder or or, or have our have our um, home controller and routes handle? What were a couple of things that we said that, that were kind of exclusive to the home page here? What were a couple of things we said that this might handle? Yeah, we said it might handle our get. Right, so um, handles initial git request for the home page, right? Okay, yeah, and handles um, add or, uh, or the post met the post method request for um, adding a new task. So those routes are going to be sent to this file. And then this file is going to determine where they're routed in the home controller, right? Because the, the controller is what's actually going to do the work, um, hitting the database, talking to the database, that kind of thing. This router is just going to basically say, all right, I have this request and I just need to know exactly where to pass it in the home controller. So the home controller knows what to do. Uh, okay. So I'm going to need a few things when I, whenever I create a new file, I need to require what I need, right? So I'm going to say const express require, um, express. And then I also need to, since we're using a router here, I also explicitly need to require a router. Yep, exactly. Const router. That's why I got this error. That's why I got this error because it says router.use requires a middleware function and we didn't have that yet. So it was looking for that. It couldn't find it. It freaked out. Const router equals express dot router. Yeah, we're going to keep them separate for now. Yeah, and you can combine a lot of this stuff. I know um, I'm just following I'm following Leon's general template for now so we don't get too far divergent from that. But yeah, you can you can um, you can definitely streamline this stuff quite a bit. Absolutely. Um, so I've got my router. I've got Express. I've got my router. And the next thing I need to do is make sure that my router can find my home controller, right? Because again, the controller is what's doing the work. It's the brain. 
and it's doing the thinking. The router is just passing the message along, right? So my router needs to know where to find my home controller. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna define, I'm gonna tell my router where to find it. So I'm gonna say home controller. Again, we're pointing to the brain. Home controller, require, dot, dot, <laughs> controllers, home. Okay, so let's look at this path. Here we use two dots because we are inside of home.js and the routes folder. So we need, we need to back up twice to get to the root, right? We're inside of home.js, we need to back up twice to get to the root, and then we can go into our controllers folder and our home file. Okay, and then I'm also gonna go ahead, as piece of shoot mentioned, I'm also gonna go ahead and set up my export statement as well. Module.exports router okay and in here is where we are going to go ahead and um, add specific routes for specific tests sorry that was my dog he just groaned really loudly <laughs> all right so i'll save this it might still crash that's okay we're okay we still don't have everything that we need there, but it's fine. It can be crashed for now. <laughs> You're starting to get the path thing. That's good. Yeah, we're getting there. We're just going to keep, we're going to keep reiterating it. We're going to keep stating it over and over again until we start to kind of see the light there. So I'm going to repeat myself a lot, but it's kind of on purpose just so that, because the, the path thing is not going to stick right away. It didn't for me. It didn't stick until I had gone through the whole Traversy tutorial, like, twice and spent 14 hours teaching it to you guys so it's okay it's not gonna it's not gonna stick for you right away all right let's go ahead and take a break it's time for a break but when we get back this is we're gonna add our routes for our specific tasks for the two tasks that we just mentioned up top here our initial git in our post we're gonna route those tasks to the correct places in our home controller so our controller gets that and says, oh, I'm listening for that. I hear you. I'm going to do the thing that you asked me to. All right. So that's what we'll do. Reset the timer. Killer dance moves. I know. <laughs> ever since I started, ever since I got a standing desk, I'm a lot more mobile. And I like my Fitbit is like, my Fitbit loves this when I, when I'm streaming, it's, I get all the activity points. It's great. All right, let's reset the timer. Five minutes, let's be healthy. Let's take a breather and come back in five. All right.
Okay, folks, we got about a minute left, so come on back if you're coming back. Get a drink of water, use the restroom, whatever you got to do. Personally, I'm waiting for my dog to finish his dinner. Okay, folks, and we are back. All right. Let's catch up on chat here. Oh, thank you, Jax888. <laughs> Glad you like the way I explain things. That's great to hear. Thank you. Um, bad circulation myself. I need a standing desk. Yeah, this is just an Ikea table that I that has extendable legs, so it's not even a real desk. Router is part of Express, yep. Uh, what kind of pup do I have? I have a standard poodle. <laughs> yep, standard poodle. He's pretty cool. He's a good dog. All right. Congratulations on the Duolingo lesson there, Mavi. Okay, so what did we do before we left off? Well, we just kind of set up the framework for our um, router here for our home routes. And Essentially, our um, our edit routes are going to be really similar. So in, in fact, I mean, we could just, you know, you could just copy this, the essentially this kind of header and this footer and just drop them in your edit.js as well. Um, just don't forget to change your file path here. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but you could do that now if you wanted. Um, all right, so now we need to add our specific routes for our specific tasks. So how do we know what those routes are? Where could we, where could we, figure out the, the routes that we need to, to add in here. Where's some places we could look for those routes? Because this app's already built, right? We're not building it. So the, the apps are already there. Um, sorry, the routes are already there. So where, where could we look for, where could we find existing routes? Yeah, so we yeah, we could look in server.js. Absolutely. That's a great place to look. Yep. And we could we could find those routes. Um what's a way that so so everything right now is kind of all smooshed together in my server.js, right? But I do want to I'm part of my goal here is to separate things out into what's exclusively happening on the home page versus what's happening on the edit page or elsewhere. So what's another place I could look to find just the specific routes that I want that are, you know, exclusive to the home page? Yeah, we could use the inspect tool. Yep. Yeah, we could. Um, so if I wanted to see like what was in, like basically I'm trying to triangulate like what's the route for this button. Um, so I could, I mean, one thing I could do is I could literally just look in my index.ejs, right? Or I could do inspect and why is that like that? Okay. Why is that so messed up? What was I looking at? Um, all right, so button type was submit. Um, and I can find the action. So what I'm looking for is essentially the form action that's gonna be submitting that um, add task, right? And so I can see my form action right here is the slash, right? Form action right here is the slash, and then the method is post. Form action is slash, method is post which makes sense, right? We wanna handle the post method. We know we're gonna have a git and we're gonna have a post. And so that's what I'm passing in right now is, of course, the, the initial git is gonna be on a slash and then we have a separate method for the post, which is also on the slash. So we can do that. Um, we can add two routes for both of those tasks, for the initial render and for the post action. 
So we'll do that. Does that make sense what we're doing here? We're, we're creating two routes, one for the initial render, one for the initial render of the page itself, and then another route for this specific action right here, this form, which is submitting our new task. Uh, Bara, what is the theme for the inspect page syntax? I like the colors. Oh, it's just whatever Chrome does. This is, this is Chrome, so it's whatever Chrome does by default. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I didn't change anything here. Okay, so two routes, one for the initial get and one for the post method when we submit a new task. And I can set up that route just by... The first one I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to set up is my initial rendering of the page. So I want to pass this, what's going to be passed in is a get request to the slash. So I'm going to say router dot get slash. That's what's going to be passed in. Now I basically need to tell the code where to go in the home controller to get what it needs. So I'm saying, all right, you get, if you router, if you get a get request to the slash, to the root, then go to the home controller. And specifically, we're gonna have a method in the home controller called get index. We haven't written it yet, but we will. So we're gonna have router.get home controller, get index, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna render the home page for us and go to the database and get all the data it needs to really fill out this page. Okay, and we're gonna write that in just a little bit. And what's the second, what should I say here for my second one? You don't have to tell me the whole thing, but what, what should be after the dot here? So we have our get for our initial render. What, now what should be after the dot for our second task? Post, right. Because we want it to be specifically looking for a post request, which is coming in. And this one is also hitting the slash, but that's okay because they're, they're two different types of requests, right? One's a get, one's a post. And this one is again going to be on home controller. And we're going to have another um, method called create task. Perfect. Now this still isn't going to run yet. You're going to save it and it's going to error out again and that's okay. Um, or it might, it might not. I don't know. Yeah, it's still going to crash. That's okay. We're just not there yet. Um, all right. So we've got our route set up home controller, get index and home controller create task. Perfect. So now what we need to do is actually build these methods so that our router has something to retrieve. Okay. So there's a Stack Overflow page explaining how to get that theme. Oh, good. Okay. I don't even remember installing that theme, but uh, awesome. Glad you're able to find it. Okay, so let's go into our um, controllers slash home file and actually build out these methods so that our router has something to grab. All right, so I'm gonna go into controllers and then home.js. And here is where we're gonna build out our methods that we can export and then our router can essentially call upon. Okay, so I am going to need to require something inside of my controller. Now, remember, let's look back at the image. Let's look back at, let's look back at our master image here. All right, make this a little bigger. Okay, so right now we are building a controller. All right, we're building a controller. Now remember, the controller is the brain, right? The controller is the brain of our app. So what, what do you think, uh, the, the controller here, the controller talks to what things, right? It talks to the views and it talks to what else? Our controller talks to our views 
but it also talks to something else. What else does it talk to? Our models, yeah. And remember, and, and in this case, in this particular app, our model is what? What, what, is it, what, are we, what are we calling our model in this particular app? What do we say our model was? Well, the DB is here. Our model talks to the DB. If I look in, so, so for as a hint, as a hint, so we can remember what our model is. Look in, the, look in my folder structure on the left. What's in the models folder? Let's, let's look in there. What, what, what's in here? To do task, yep. Yeah, but what is, what is to do task? What is this? What's in this folder? Schema, and it's a mongoose schema, right? It's a mongoose schema specifically. <laughs> hey, Wolf, I love that question. I just kind of read it really quickly. Um, I will answer that question during the next break, okay? So hold that thought and please ask your question again during the next break. I really like it. We'll have another break at about 10 p.m. and I will answer your question, okay? Great question though. Uh, yes, it's a mongoose schema, exactly. So if I want my brain to be able to talk to the model, what do we think I might need to require in this file? What do you think my brain might need to, to what do you think my, my controller here might need to, to, to require? Yeah, we're gonna need to do, we're gonna need to require the, the path to the model, the path to our schema, the path to our mongoose schema. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna need to require the path to our mongoose schema. Exactly. Yep. I just wanted to be clear that 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 our controller here can't do things on its own. It needs to talk to our model, which is a mongoose schema. And so we need to require our mongoose schema before we can do anything else and talk to our database. That was really messy. I need to, I'm going to get rid of some of that. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just call this to do task, to do task. And I'm going to go ahead and require our mongoose schema. I'm going to back up twice because we're inside of a folder. So models, and you can always tell when you have, when you, when you've gotten to the right level, because VS code will help you with the folder structure. So here we're going to go into models and the only thing in models is this file called to do task. And so we're going to require that bad boy. All right. So now what we can do is we can call on our model inside of our controller. So I'll save this. It's going to crash again. That's okay. Um, and let's just take, while we're here, let's take a quick look at what this model is. Okay. So inside of the model, the first, you don't remember, and we're, we're, we're our, I'm sorry, not, that's the wrong folder. I'm sorry. There. All right. <laughs> My bad. All right. So inside of here, we're not going to change anything here. I, we're, I'm just, I'm just showing this to you. We're not going to change anything. Um, you can leave this exactly as is. I just want to talk about what this is doing. Okay. Uh, does the variable need to be capitalized? I assume are you are you asking about um, are you asking about this? This I think this like with most things in JavaScript, it's just a convention as far as I'm aware. Uh, I don't think it absolutely needs to be capitalized. It's just you're supposed to. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that are just kind of common practice, right? Um, all right, so inside of our model or our schema here, what we're doing is we are requiring mongoose first, and then we're creating a new schema. And now a lot of folks were asking about 
you know, we, we set up our database in our inside of our connection string, inside of our original, inside of our .env file, we, we set up our database, but where is the collection? Where is it? Where is it? Um, you know, and the schema is where we specify which collection we're putting data into and getting data out of. Okay, so we specify the database in the connection string and we specify the collection, which is the smaller unit inside of the database. We specify that with the schema. So that's why I didn't wanna like, I didn't wanna skip too far ahead and um, you know talk about the collection yet, but that's where we do it is here in the schema. So let's just take a quick pass through this schema because hint, hint, this is something that Leon wants you to talk about in your uh, MVC lecture. You're gonna have to talk about schemas. He mentioned it specifically. So FYI. Um, yeah, so we're setting up a new schema and all we need to say is new schema, pretty straightforward. And here we're just specifying essentially the line items that are going to go inside of each document, each document in our collection. So we have three elements. We have the title, the title of the task. We have the content of the task, and then we just have the date. Now the date is not not really relevant to this particular app, um, but we're just putting it in there just so it's there. I mean, it's just a nice thing to have. Um, and the the cool thing about schemas, you might you might say, all right, fine. Why do I need a schema? Because like, isn't this what we were doing already? Every time we wrote something to the database using MongoDB client, we specified the we specified the the individual like properties inside the document. And then we said, what should go there? And so how is this any different? Well, here, like I said earlier, we can specify additional properties for each item. So here we're specifying that the type must be a string. The content must also be a string. And then the date must be a date. Uh, and we're also setting each of these items to be required. So I, I can't run this right now because it's, in a broken state, but um, if you were to try to submit a task that didn't have a title, it would not work because that's a required field. Same with content. You need both a title and content in order for it to submit successfully. It will not pass validation. It will not go into the database unless you have both of those fields. Now, does anybody know why I don't have to enter a date, right? Because there's no field that where I, where, I, where I can enter a date here, right? The only two things I can enter are title and content. So why don't I have to enter a date? Just by looking at this, can anybody figure out why I don't have to enter a date value? Yeah, it's default. Exactly. It has a default value specified. So two reasons. We didn't specify, we didn't say this required value. We didn't set a required value here. And we set a default value, which is going to auto populate it with the current date time. Exactly. So if we just look at the inside of the um, inside of my MongoDB here, just real quick. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. boop, boop. All right. So um, it's probably kind of hard to see. I apologize. Uh, let me make this a little bigger. The Atlas interface is not particularly readable friendly, um, but we can, he we can see here that each of my tasks has an object ID in the database that's auto-generated. That's, that's something that Mongo does for everything. We have our object ID. We have our um, title. We have our content. And then we have the date which is something we don't really care about for this app, but it's there. So if we ever wanted to reference it, we could. Perfect. Yeah, and it doesn't say require true. That's also true, Mavi. Yep. Okay. So it's there. That doesn't mean we have to use it. And, you know, but it's nice to have in general, just to, for troubleshooting purposes too. Uh, that underscore V... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that's for. It's just, that's another default field because it has that underscore in front of it, just like the underscore ID. I think it's just another like auto-generated field. I'm not sure what the underscore V is though. I haven't had to use it yet. That's a good question though. 
Um, okay, so these are our three elements that we are putting into our schema. Title, content, and date. And then the last thing that we do, just like everything else that we've done so far, we have to export it. And we export it as a model. Model, 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 right here. Model, model, model. We're exporting it as a model so we can use it elsewhere in our app. Right. Um, and when we export it, we can give it a name. So we're calling it to do task. That's the name of our model. We're calling it to do task. And we are assigning it to the to do task schema. So we're just saying, hey, take this schema, give it the name to do task. And the third um, parameter that I'm passing in here, see if you can figure out what that equates to. So this third parameter is called, is, I'm passing in a string called tasks. So let's just take a, another quick look at the database here. Can anybody figure out what that third parameter might, or what that third argument might be? It's the collection, exactly. So look right here. You see, this is my database, to-do tasks. And inside there, I now have a collection called tasks, right? And I, that's the name I specified right here. So for everybody wondering about, well, what do we say, what do we say about the collection? There it is, right there. Now, I don't have to specify a collection here. This is an optional argument. <laughs> I guessed right. This is an optional argument. You don't have to put that in there. Leon probably doesn't put that in there. Um, you could just leave it with two things. You, you, all you really need is just the name of the model that you're exporting and then the schema that you're assigning to it, in which case it's this one right here. So we assign the schema, we export it as a model called to-do tasks. And does any, what would happen if I didn't specify a collection name? What does it do? You'll see this a lot. So I just, I want to, I want to pause here for a second and say, all right, if I export a schema as a model and I don't specify a collection name, what happens? Does it bomb? Knowing what you know about MongoDB, what do you think happens if you, if you had to guess? Yeah, DevQuest, in general, it will create a collection for you. It will pick a name, exactly. It will pick a default name. And in this case, it will um, uh, it will take the the plural of whatever the whatever you name your model. So in my case, it would be called to do tasks. And I didn't want that because it was I already have a lot of things called to do tasks. So it was getting confusing. So that's why I specified a name here of um, tasks like this. Um, but yeah, it, it, by default, it'll take the plural of whatever you named your model. So most of the times you will only, you will see this export only having two arguments. Here I have three because I wanted to specify a collection name, but you don't have to. So MME Cotton, no, to do task is, in this case, to do task is not the name of the database. Um, we already specified the name of the database in our connection string. So that's already taken care of. We already know what database we're connected to. We're already connected to the database. We don't got to connect again. Um, so in the case of our, um, in the case of our, sorry, I got to get back to it, B -b 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 models. In the case of our model here, this is just the name of the model. This is giving us something that we can reference elsewhere. Mongo is so chill, I know. Compared to like, um, you know, the relation, the relational databases that I've worked with up until now, like Mongo is incredibly chill, like to a scary degree, which is why I like Mongoose because it forces a little bit of structure. Mongo, for, for me, like with my experience with relational databases, um, like relational databases are like the, the, you know, like the uptight principal in like a, you know, like an eighties college movie, you know, the, the dean of the school or whatever. And then, you know, MongoDB is like the, the frat boys at the frat house, you know, just doing whatever they want. Mongo is extremely loosey goosey. It's like, um, John Belushi in uh, animal house or something. Yeah. It's a little much. 
So that's why I like mongoose because it forces a little bit of structure. All right, so we've got that and we can save it. And I did the only changes I made here is just, I just took away the tasks and put it back. So you shouldn't make any changes to this um, schema. You don't have to, it's already fine. Um, I just wanted to run through it and show you what's happening here. Okay, so that's all good. We're exporting this so we can use it elsewhere. So let's go back to our controllers and our home controller. And let's build this out so that we can finally render our home page. Hooray! <laughs> all right. So we've required to do task. It's, so we're going into that models folder. We're getting the model that we created to do task. And now we can reference it. So uh, I'm going to create a method that I can export and my router can call. So here I'm going to say module.exports. And in here, I'm going to put, uh, let's see, let's look back at the router real quick. I need a method called get index and I need a method called create task. Get index will render our home page and create task will create a new task. So let's build out both of those. We'll start with get index. So get index, boop. And I'm gonna have an async function here because I'm going to be, I have to go to the database and I have to pull down all the list items. And actually, sorry, what I'm, what I'm also gonna do is I already have this functionality, right? The, the functionality that is going to render the home page and, and get everything out of the database. So I'm gonna just grab that from my server.js file because that's where it currently is, right? With the way the app is currently constructed, all of this is in server.js, which is why we're breaking it out so that it's, it's easier to navigate. All right, so server.js, I'm just gonna find this. We have app.get. And this is where we're hitting the database, we're pulling everything back, we're rendering index.ejs, and we're catching errors. So I'm just gonna grab everything from the async onward. So I went into server.js, I went to the get method, and I'm grabbing everything from async onward. Just gonna grab that and drop it into the controller. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, four or five, exactly, the get method, right? Because let's look at what this is doing. It's doing exactly what we need. It's already written, right? The, the app worked before, we're just refactoring it. So we're hitting the database. We're going to that to-do task model because our to-do task model knows what collection to go to. It already knows that. We're gonna to go to the collection that's specified in the model. We're gonna find everything, bring it back, render our index.ejs with passing in all of the tasks that it found, and then we're gonna catch any errors. Uh, Champa, what, what, what do you want me to show again? All I did was just go to server.js and grab the get method. So I'm starting at line 28 in, uh, in server.js. I just grabbed everything from the word async all the way to the end. Yeah. I didn't type super fast. I just copied and pasted. <laughs> That's the best way. Copy and paste, my friends. Copy and paste. It's your friend. Um, all right. So we've got that. That'll allow us to render, pass in the tasks, and our index.ejs will render, uh, and then we'll return an error. So there is one adjustment that I need to make, because if I try to run this right now, it'll probably give me an error saying something like, um, it's really cryptic, it's like, you know, can't pass two headers or something like that. And this one took me a little while to troubleshoot, but that's okay, I will teach you the quick way yeah, and we will delete it from server.js. Yep. Um, once we're done building the controller and we have it saved, then I'll go back and delete it from server.js. Um, 
I just don't like to delete things before I have to because then you've deleted it and then it's gone. So <laughs> I'm a little uh, careful in that way. All right. So async, we're going to try and we're just going to change the structure of this part just a little bit. So I'm just going to say af right after the try, I'm just going to say const tasks. I'm going to await to do task dot find to do task dot find and then I'm going to render index.ejs and I'm going to pass in tasks and get rid of the other extra parentheses. So I just changed the structure just a little bit. So I'm setting a variable. I'm saying find everything that's in the, um, the task list, find all the tasks, const tasks, await to do task.find, dump it into a variable called tasks, and then render index.ajs just like before and pass in the ta list of tasks. The only reason I had to do that was because I have like a nest, I had like some kind of a nested request response thing and I spent like an hour figuring out the all the errors it was throwing. <laughs> so, just, just, you don't, just take my word for it. You got to do this. <laughs> yeah, we had a callback. Exactly. And it was, it was trying to pass a double header and it gave a very cryptic error and I had to Google a lot. So yeah, it was a callback and now it's gone. Callback is fixed. All right. So we will save this. It might still error out and that's okay. Um, so, uh, some of, uh, uh, I'm not going to show what was there before because that will error out. So just, just match what's right here. Um, I'm not even going to go back and show that again. I don't want to confuse people because that's that, that will error out. So just, just match what's right here in the try block. So I'm going to leave this up so you can see it. Just match what's in the try block right here. All right. So that's task one, that's the get index task. And then the other thing we're gonna do is add our, um, our second route, right? Our second route, our first route was get index to render the page. And then our second was create task, right? We have two things that this page needs to do. It needs to render itself and then it needs to create the task. Yeah. Yeah, all I did, all I did here, it was nothing crazy. I just simplified the find call to get the stuff and then render the index ejs. So just copy this, you'll be fine. And then add, you know, make sure you still got your catch statement, but I didn't change anything about the catch. Yeah, I'm not going to scroll, Champo. I'm going to leave it right here. I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to leave this up on the page. I am going to go down just by one, but I'm going to leave the whole thing up. There you go. Okay. There should be enough room. I think we'll be okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create task. So just put a comma after your first method, put a comma and then create task. And here I am going to have to do another copy paste. So I'll wait just a second for folks to kind of catch up there. Just let me know when you're ready. I am going to, I'm going to need to flip to another page and copy something else from our server.js file. Um, so just let me know when you're ready. ready. All right. We got one. I'm ready. Promotion. I'm ready. That's SpongeBob, wasn't it? It's been a while. Cool beans.
gonna hydrate one more time here. Okay, tell you what, um, over the next break, we are, you know, um, I will, um, I'll push this to GitHub, what we have so far. So anybody that's gotten, you know, lost in the sauce, um, you can just download it um, and work at your own, you know, work at your own pace and troubleshoot that way. So over the break, I'll, I'll load this to GitHub and I'll paste the, um, the, um, uh, the repo uh, in the chat. So hopefully that'll help. All right, so let's keep going for now. Um, and, the, and also too, this should not be working right now. It should be erroring out. So if you're trying to get it to stop erroring, it's 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 going to be broken for a little bit. So don't don't freak out. <laughs> it's going to be erroring for a little bit until we're done here. Um, so if you're trying to get it to work this whole time, I apologize, but yeah, it's going to be erroring. Um, error is expected, indeed, for just a little while longer. We'll be working soon. It's okay. Um, all right. So we're, let's start with this create task. So we're going to go back to our server.js file. And we're going to grab our post method, right? We want to create a new task. We're going to grab the post method, which is just below the get method. So you can just grab that. And I'm just going to snag the whole thing. Pew! Grab the whole thing. Actually, grab everything from the async um, onward. So I'm leaving out the, the, the app.post part everything from the async down to this, this pink parenthesis here, or pink uh, curly brace here. Grab that, drop her in. And what we're doing here is we're just creating the new task. We're passing it into our to-do task model. We're saving it, console logging it for funsies. And then, what are we doing here? So, so we're creating a new task, right? We're creating a new task. We're saving it. And then what are we doing here? Right here where it's highlighted. Yeah, we're refreshing. Why do we want to refresh? Why, why, why do we want to do that after we add a new task to the database? Why is that? Yeah, get the homies, indeed. <laughs> we need to, uh, yeah, we're, and exactly, Wolf goes now. That's exactly what we're doing. I, I know, yeah, you, you, you didn't, uh, you probably missed the whole introduction part. So yes, what we're doing is we are re we're refactoring some existing code into an MVC format um, so that it's uh, you know easier to to compartmentalize. So yeah, you're exactly right, Wolf. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So the reason we're doing this redirect is to essentially go back and perform that 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 find again get all the tasks again and re-render the page with the new task in place so that's what we're doing yeah we're, all we're doing is we're just making it so it displays the update and then if we get an error we're also we're doing the same thing <laughs> we're redirecting as well to take it back to the home page yep you're all you all you all of you got it right absolutely okay i'm gonna save this it's probably still going to crash. That's okay. All right. So we're essentially done with our home controller because we're covering everything that we routed to it, right? The two things we said we want to cover, we covered, we got our get index, we got to create tasks. So let's go back and look at our router again. So for every get request that comes in on that route, we're going to grab that get index method. And for every post request that comes in on that home route, we're gonna grab the create task method. And so both of those are in place now, so they should work. Now, in order to get my code, so I, I do wanna test this. We can t we'll be able to test this here in a second. Um, in order to test this successfully, I'm gonna have to make a couple changes in my server.js file. Um, Uh, oh, there was a question about, sorry, I missed, there was a, do you have a video where you show what you did to your CSS to make it look like that? Yes, I do. 
Uh, and I believe that that's the video that Rascal linked to there. Thank you for that, Rascal. Yeah, well, I have a I have a long video where we where we built this whole app from scratch. This is just we're just refactoring it with this particular stream. But yeah, I have a video where I built that from scratch. So. I'm curious how the redirect request gets sent from this controller since this is the controller that handles the get request. So the redirect is literally just acting like the browser and passing in the, the root. So it's just it's just acting like like we do when we visit the home page. It's just passing that in, it gets sent back through the router and handled appropriately. So you're still gonna get an error. So so we got to fix, we, like I said, we got to fix a couple more things in our server.js file, and then we'll be able to test this. Um, yeah, we do need to, yep, we need to clean up our server.js. Exactly. So we have our route is, our route is set, our model is in place, and our controller is set. Now we just need to make sure that the server is configured to be listening for, is, is configured to handle this stuff appropriately. So exactly right so what i'm going to do is as others were saying i'm going to go ahead and get rid of my get method so inside of my server.js i feel like i feel comfortable <laughs> i feel okay with this now i'm going to get rid of the git and i'm going to get rid of the post we're going to leave the others in place for now because we're going to be putting those in our um we're going to be putting those in our um other controller in a little bit but I do want to do a test. So uh, I believe I'm going to save this. Probably still going to error. That's okay. Um, oh, I'm getting an interesting one. So that, this might be different than what you guys get. But can I overwrite to do task model once compiled? Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll figure that out. Um, so what you all should be able to do is just comment out this um, second route here, this edit route, because we haven't built it yet. So try commenting that out. So all we're using is the home routes. Try that. Um, then I do want to check one more thing. Okay, and then we also, so, so we need to, to, to comment out edit routes for now. And we already required our home routes. I'm just double checking here. We required home routes, so we've got that. It knows what it is. We've got edit routes in there. And okay. Are you getting, uh, are, is everybody getting the to-do task model thingy? It's all right, we'll figure it out. Oh, okay, well, that's a new one. Fun. Cannot overwrite to do task model once compiled. Okay. I know I'm on my own. <laughs> overwrite model error. Okay, well, let's go to Google. It's all good. I've not seen this one before, so let's. Oh, thank you, Wolf. Wolf got it because we didn't take it out of server.js. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Good catch, Wolf. Right. So we've defined it. So we have it. We currently have it in our server.js. So we just need to get it out of there. Yep. Okay. Let me just try commenting this out real quick. Oops. Not there. And for now, just for now, I'm also going to comment out all of the other methods. So everything else in server.js other than your server start. Yeah. So I'm just for safety, I'm just gonna comment all these out. So all we're gonna have left in server.js is the home routes and our server dot list our, our app dot listen down here because you still want your server to be able to start right so try that good catch wolf i appreciate it wolf pet <laughs> okay save that 
Hey, and we're back up and running. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I reloaded the homepage there. You probably didn't see that. Oh, sorry, Driftwood. <laughs> yeah, you said something too. I just got excited because there's another, like, there's another person with wolf in their name in the chat. I just got real excited. So not to, not diminishing anybody else's contributions, just excited. Um, all right. So I refreshed the homepage. Perfect. So that works. So let's walk through, um, let's walk through this route real quick, right? So it worked. Hooray. Good. So what happened? When I went to localhost 8000 in the browser, just like that, the server.js said, hey, for if a request come in, comes in with the slash, then I should use the home routes. And home routes is defined as whatever's in routes slash home. All right, so I go to routes slash home. And in routes slash home, I see that this is a git request on the slash. So it's saying I should go to the home controller and grab the git index method. So inside of my controller slash home, I go to the git index method and run this. And when I run that, it finds the tasks it renders index.ejs with the task list inside of it and it sends that back to the browser. So what happened there was we sent in the slash to our router. I'm going to get rid of some of this. Um, we sent in the slash to our router, to our series of routers actually, um, passing through the controller, um, sent it to the router, and it in turn sent that to our home controller executed the appropriate method, sent that to the view to populate it, and then rendered it out to the browser. So essentially we followed this path. One, two, there were a few controllers in there, but one, two, three, four, five. Also with the database in there, sorry, <laughs> six. <laughs> Yeah, so essentially it was like boop, boop, to the model, to the controller, to the view, back to the controller, to the browser. So there's a lot going on there, right? That was a lot happening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven individual, well, I guess eight because it's hitting the database as well. So there's like, eight individual bounces around to various places in the code just to give us the home page and the task list. That's wild, isn't it? And think about how fast that happened. You couldn't even see it. I click reload. It happens in a fraction of a second, which is pretty wild if you think about it. So let's just test and see if we can add a task here. See if that works. Uh, so title is, um, we're gonna, the next thing we're gonna, so finish, um, finish home page, get it to render and populate with MVC, which we did. So let's see if we can add a task. Hey, it adds a task and we can see over here in the terminal that it created a new database item with an object ID and it wrote to the da database successfully. So all that bouncing around was successful and took place in a fraction of a second, <laughs> which is pretty cool. All right, so we're about time for another break. This is a decent stopping point, but what questions do we have in the next couple minutes here before we take our next break? And Wolf, I haven't forgotten about your question. Um, you may need to ask it again if it's too far up in the chat, um, but I also do wanna answer your question there, Wolf. Thank you for the hydrate.
Yeah, that's okay. If you need, if it, if uh, if your code isn't working, that's okay. I'll I'll push it to GitHub over the break. Or if you just gotta, you know, if you just gotta take a break and you just wanna, you know, watch the rest. That's fine too. There's no harm if if you aren't able to code along. This is all very new, right? Yeah, well, so we're we're using a very simplified stack here. Um, we're pretty, um, uh, yeah, we're we're just using JavaScript and EJS, no React, um, nothing fancy. Uh, we're all you know still learning uh, basic web dev concepts, so we're not implementing anything spectacular with this particular app. It's really just a demonstration of basic MVC concepts. Yeah, we're not doing two projects. We're doing a single set. We're doing a single full stack project. Um, some of my, a couple of my past ones have been two separate, like a backend API and then a front end, different front end client to hit it. Um, but this one's a single stack. This is just single. It's such, it's so small. Keeping it simple, indeed. Just really just to practice refactoring and to practice um, MVC. Small, indeed. Yeah, please ask your earlier question there, Wolf. Yeah, so I am a SQL developer. Uh, so my real title, I say SQL developer just so people know what I'm talking about. My actual title is a uh, senior business intelligence developer, which sounds a bit different, but I mean, you say business intelligence and people are like, what, what is that? What is that? Um, so yeah, my actual title is senior business intelligence developer, um, but I work with SQL. So I just say SQL dev. How do you feel about the title SQL developer versus software developer, software engineer, if you could have one? I mean, I've never seen a stigma with the term SQL developer. Um, I mean, previously to this course, to what we're, previously to this course that I'm enrolled in right now, 100 devs, um, I didn't know anything other than SQL. So to say that I was like a software developer, I don't think would have been accurate because I didn't, I only knew SQL. I was in SQL dev first and foremost. Um, so now I could say, I feel like I could say I'm a software developer or software engineer, whatever. Um, but previously I think SQL developer would have fit me. Okay. Um, I hope that's a decent answer for you there, Wolf. Um, Feel free to ask a follow-up if you need to. Um, I, let's go ahead and take our break. Uh, I will push this code to GitHub and I'll share the, the link to the repo with you, uh, but I'm gonna do that during the break so people have a chance to uh, go get a drink of water or whatever they've gotta do and they don't have to wait on me to set up my Git repository. Um, so let's go ahead and set up our timer. Reset and start. And when we get back, what we're going to do is we are going to configure our um, edit.js and all of our remaining edit tasks. So really, that's all we have left to do is we just need to set up our all the tasks in our edit.js file or our edit.js um, route and controller. Um, and so that'll handle essentially everything else. And that those are mostly like we, we talked about the kind of the hard stuff already, like what is this? Um, the, the, the rest of the things are going to be more copy and paste. All right. So I'll get that set up for you. The, the repo. See you back in five.
Okay, folks, start coming on back. Also, I'm going to go ahead and um, put the link to the repository for this code. All the code we've completed so far, the link to the repo is right there in uh, chat. So if you want to copy and paste that, you can. If you're lost in the sauce, um, feel free to grab that repo. Just set it up over the break. It's your birthday? What? It's Rascal's birthday. Everybody say happy birthday to Rascal. Y'all better. <laughs> better say happy birthday to Rascal. It's a requirement. Okay, let me get my window sorted out again. I'm all messed up now. Okay, get this on one side and get that over there. Okay, there we go. We're back. <laughs> All right, happy solar orbit anniversary, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, right. Ryan, you already got Rascal a birthday gift with that sub. Absolutely. I think that counts. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So what did we do? We got it. So our homepage will render and uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste the link to that repo in there again. I think it was quite deservedly so drowned out by birthday wishes for, for Rascal. Again, happy birthday. Um, there's the repo again if you need to grab bits of the code. Remember, if you just go and try to run that, you're gonna to have to, you know, put in your uh, environment, you know, put in your database string and put in your, all that stuff again. So um, just pick your poison, whether you wanna copy and paste bits of code or um, just start over with that. Either way is fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start this back up again. NPM start after I created the repo. Connected to the database, there we go, all set. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we essentially, what we did is we um, set up our home routes. So we set up our home routes in the router and we set up our home controller. So routes that are passing from the browser with the appropriate, um, like for, to the root for the slash they're passed through the router, handled by the controller. Controller hits the database, does the views, all that stuff, and passes it back to the browser. However, if we want to make any changes to tasks, such as editing them, deleting them, updating them, even just rendering the edit page, right now, we don't have any um, routes that are listening for that. <laughs> like forked and cloned so quickly. <laughs> Six hours to celebrate. Oh man. <laughs> okay. So now we need what we need is instead of our home routes, we're going to focus on the edit route. So we're going to do very similar to what we did before. So this is what we're working on now. Edit. Um, now we're going to set up our edit routes that are listening for um, essentially go back to server.js here. In server.js, those are the routes that are listening for paths that begin with slash edit. So slash edit, we're going to, we need to set up our edit routes. So our edit routes are going to be in edit.js. So I did uncomment this, this slash, I, I did uncomment this um, single line in server.js. I took away the comments. Um, it's going to start crashing again because we it's expecting us to build out some routes, right? Um, that's okay. We're going to crash for a little bit again. Just, you know, controlled crash. Um, so let's go ahead and build out those routes. Edit routes is listening for the edit file inside of our edit, inside of our routes folder. All right. So inside of edit.js, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just grab everything from our home.js that we already built and paste that in there. So I have all of my requirements and I have my export. 
So I did that kind of fast, but really what I did is I just went into home.js, home.js, grabbed everything, dumped it in there, and got rid of the, the, the home routes. This gives me the header and the footer that I need in order to make these routes work. So again, I'm requiring express. I'm requiring the router component of express. And now I need to point my edit routes. I need to point my edit routes at the appropriate controller. So I'm going to define a constant here called edit controller. And I want to point to the edit.js file inside of my controllers folder. So edit that controller. Perfect. Hey, C Films, welcome. Yeah, we're just finishing up with our MVC. Actually, we're setting up our last set of routes um, and then setting up our um, uh, edit options for our app. Hey, no worries, Miss Babelfish. Yeah, absolutely. Go get something to eat. Go to bed. Do whatever you got to do. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so Ryan, if you want to shout out somebody, you got to do exclamation point shout out. You actually got to spell it out. It's a, um, it's a limitation of the uh, Moobot. Um, all right. So controller slash edit. So now let's think about what routes we need to pass in to this router file. So looking at our app, we're already handling rendering the home page. We're already handling what happens when I click this button. What are some other things that I'm going to have to pass into that? What are the, what are the remaining things that I haven't covered yet? Um, that I might want to pass into my edit routes. Yeah, right. We've got some additional CRUD operations that we haven't covered yet, right? Like updating and deleting. Yeah. What's another thing? What's another thing that we haven't covered? We we covered rendering the uh, the the home page, right? But what did what didn't we cover? What what other thing did did we hovering my mouse over the, the relevant uh, location here. We covered rendering index.ejs, but what 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 didn't we what didn't we cover yet? Yeah, rendering the edit page, right? There's a whole other page that we haven't even rendered yet. Yeah, so so we have a couple of CRUD operations to cover. So it's, so it's like updating a, an existing um, item, right? and deleting an existing item and then also rendering that uh, that whole edit page yeah so a few things we got to cover that's okay so we're gonna we're gonna say um okay um routes will handle um editing and deleting deleting items as well as um rendering the edit page itself. Okay. Cool. Hey, Code Ludo. Welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here, my friend. All right. Now let me, I want to make sure I get this right. So let me pull it up here on my other screen. Hey, no worry. Hey, welcome, Count the Shells. <laughs> Thank you. Glad you're having a good time. All right. So if I want to edit a single item or delete a single item, um, we, we looked at this a little while ago, like a couple hours ago. When I click on the edit button or the delete button, we looked up in the browser what was something unique about that path? What was that? What was something unique about that path that, that that we saw that we noted about the path? When I when I clicked the when I clicked like edit or delete or whatever, when I was focusing on a specific item, what was unique about that path that got passed through? Yeah. 
Yeah, right, right. It used the ID of the individual item that we wanted to edit. Now, why do we want to pass the ID? Why, why, do, we, why do we pass the ID in the route? Why do we care about that? Why, why do we care about passing the ID in, in, the, um, you know, in, a, in a path or in a route at all? Why does that matter? Why don't we just say like, you know, slash edit? Why, why you know? Yeah, exactly, right. Because we, we need to use that ID. We're gonna have a controller that's gonna use that ID and do a lookup against the database, right? Yeah, so we're, we need to pass the ID through the router to the controller so that the controller can pass it to the model and talk to the database and say, hey, database, please give me just this one item that I need to edit, right? Or please make an update to just one item. Because before we didn't care, right? We just grabbed all the things and we pulled all the things down. But now we're focusing on a specific item. So that item ID has to get all the way through the router, through the controller, through the model and to the database and then back. Yeah, so that's, that's why that's important, okay. All right, so what that's telling us is that we're gonna have to somehow pass the ID through our route. Now, what's a way that we know of to, to pass a, um, almost like a variable in a route? We've done this before, right? Or at least some of us have. Um, passing, a, passing a sort of a, a, a value that can change. What do we, um, what do we call that? When you pass a changeable value in a route. So, yes, that's right, Ryan. It, so it's from a from a template side, yeah, that's how we can pass a changeable value, certainly. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, Rascal got it. Yep, it's a route path parameter. And you'll, you'll recognize it when you see it. It's all good. That was a hard one. Yeah, it's a param, right? It's a param. You'll, you might recognize it when you see it. You might not, want, know, you might not know what it's called, um, but you'll probably recognize it when you see it, or at least the syntax of it. So let's do that. Um, so I know that I am, when I click this edit button right here, I need to grab the ID of the item, put it into the route, but that ID is always going to change. So I kind of just want to like, you know, quantify it as a parameter right now. So I'm going to say, this is going to be a get request. Um, the first thing we're going to go ahead and set up is rendering the edit page itself with the item that I click on. So if I click on the second one here, I want to only, I want to have that one be editable, right? Have like the edit box around it and have some special formatting that allows me to edit it. All the other ones should stay the way they are, but this one right here should be editable. So I'm gonna say router.get, and I'm gonna pass a route which contains the ID that comes from our EJS. So that's why I have the, the, the colon here and then ID. This ID will, when it when it gets passed into the, into the route, it will actually be the ID of the, the item itself. All right. And when I pass that through, I'm going to say edit controller. So I'm going to go into my controller file and I'm going to look for a method called get edit. That's what I'm going to call it once we build it. So just like we did before, I'm going to go into my controller file. I'm going to look for a method called get edit and I'm going to run that. <laughs> cool indeed yeah yeah so we can pass changeable values in our routes right they don't always have to be static a lot of times they'll be static but a lot of times they won't if we need to pass meaningful values through a bunch of these routes and through controllers and things like that the best way to do it is like this now you may end up with you know different ways of doing this of you know sending them in body or you know request body if you have some client-side javascript um, there's other ways to do it, but this is the way we're going to do it here. All right. 
The next thing I want to do, so what this is going to do is it's going to call a method that's going to render our edit page and format it appropriately. And the next one I'm going to go ahead and set up is our remove path. So if I click the X, I want to immediately send a request through the, through the routes, through the controllers, up to the database saying, delete this immediately. Just delete it, get rid of it, goodbye. All right, and so in order to do that, just bear with me here, it's gonna look a little strange. You're gonna wonder why I'm doing something the way I'm doing it, but don't panic, it's okay. All right, I'm gonna pass in a get, but it's gonna be a slightly different route. Remove, sorry remove slash again passing in a specific item looking in the edit controller file and we're going to have a method called delete delete task okay so the route that's going to be passed in is going to be remove pass in the id of the item and then call a method for delete task Yeah, piece of dude. Again, it's one of those things we could definitely streamline this. For now, we're gonna have separate routes because I feel like the route concept is hard enough to understand. But yeah, I get that. You could send you'd have a single singular route and then you know do more put, offload more logic in the controller itself and make that more um, complex. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll do more of that as our apps get larger and longer. We're gonna have to do more of that, right? Fewer routes, more logic. How is the okay? Great. That's a great question there, MME Cotton. How is the ID passed from EJS? Yeah, and we'll, we'll touch on that in, in just a minute. Well, we're gonna have to look at the EJS anyway um, here shortly. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll trace that through and see how it's passed up. Um, yeah, and Deep Red Penguin says like user home pages. Yeah, so these, these unique routes are gonna be really valuable or, and necessary as soon as you start working with, yeah, user specific pages, um, you know, really any specific type of data that you want to pass back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to need these parameters. Uh, okay, so that's the second one is delete task. And then the third one is going to be for our update. And because we have no client side JavaScript in this app, it's just the way it's built. Um, not saying it's the right way to do or best practice or anything like that, but we have no client side JavaScript in this app and everything is handled through hyperlinks and forms. Um, so forms, HTML forms, like this is a form right here. This is a form. Forms are limited um, in the kind types of tasks that they can perform. So on the edit page, when we go to um, edit a document, it's gonna be edited through a form. And forms by default in HTML can only handle what two types of requests? What two types of CRUD requests can forms handle? They can't handle all four or more. <laughs> Evening tap coming in strong with the all caps. Yeah, get and post. <laughs> post and put <laughs> no yeah no so so uh <laughs> you're half right there yeah so so forms can handle post to create new items yep and dinko actually forms cannot do puts yeah you think they could right you think they could Yep, Dinko, uh, so yeah, they, they, you think they could do puts, but they can't. So they can do, um, yeah, right, it's so weird, isn't it? Yeah, they can really just do, like like Evening Tap said, yeah, they can really just do get post. Um, and that's in, like Deep Fried Penguin said, yep, get and post. They can't do deletes. They're so lazy, right? Yeah. Yep, so I love that Evening Tap coming in hot. That's awesome. I love it when people come in with like the, the right answer on like the first try. It's the best. All right, um, <laughs> so 
all of that, all of that preamble to tell you why on our on on the router for the update when we want to update a task it's going to be listening for a post request because we're using a form to fudge it because we have no client side javascript so we are doing a post it's okay though it all works out in the end all right i didn't know that people sometimes change their mind nope they just thought that everybody got everything right the first try all the time you mean you don't? Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm being a bad. I'm being a, a real baddie with this. Past me was a baddie. Yep. So what we're doing to handle updates is we are listening for a post request with passing in the ID. But it doesn't matter in the end because the database is going to do the right operation anyway. So it's okay. We are baddies indeed. And so when I when this gets passed in, it's going to be listening for a post request on the ID. And you might think, won't this get confused? Won't this get confused and think I'm trying to add a new task? Hmm. Why why will this be perfectly fine to do? Just just puzzle on that. Why why do you think I can do this post request? and be perfectly fine and have it actually know exactly where to go to the edit controller and do an update task method, which we're gonna code in just a minute. It's, no, you'll see that when we get there, it's actually doing an update. It's not rewriting the task. It, it's, it's actually doing a, a true update. It's going to be, yes, it's going to be doing it, but how does it know, right? Because we had a post request before. We had a post request before. Right here. This is a post request. When I click this, it's going to post. It's going to add, it just added a new task. So how do I know it's not going to try to update a task that doesn't exist? That's all right. Just, just keep that in your head and we'll, we'll trace the, we'll trace the route through. Yes. Deep fried penguin. You got it. It has to do with the initial route and it's okay. Just think, keep that in your head. Think, why does that work? Why does that work perfectly fine when it looks identical to the previous post request or close to it? But once we trade, we're going to trace these routes through It's the last thing we do tonight. We're going to trace the routes through and that should solve it for you. It's kind of hard to think about the big picture of the full route when you're, you know, actually coding it. So just keep that in the back of your head. All right. It's going to crash. That's okay. Um, as soon as I saved it, it crashed because we haven't written any of these controllers yet. So let's write, let's write these controllers. And in order to do that, we're going to go into our edit.js file. And inside of edit.js, essentially, we're just going to grab the remaining stuff that we haven't used yet from our server.js. So I commented this stuff out earlier. Don't worry about the orange. That's just an extension that I'm using that's doing weird stuff with my comments. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the um, the first route. Let's just go ahead and grab the whole thing for now. Well, first I'm gonna, um, first I'm gonna uncomment it. Just, uh, here we go. To see it. All right, to see it better. So this is the one I want. This is the one where it's going to render edit.ejs. And I think I just want the git portion, but let me let me double check that. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just the essentially everything from uh rec and res all the way through the end of this. So right here, I'm just gonna grab this portion of the update method, copy that, and then go back over to our controller and drop it in. And then around that, I'm gonna go ahead and put our export statement. So module.exports. All right, and then inside of there, I'm gonna call this method, what am I gonna call it? Forget, I'm calling it git edit. All 
All right, so this get edit method, what is it doing? It is grabbing the ID from the route that we're passing in, right? So you remember that that, that route had the colon ID, and this is extracting that request parameters ID. It's extracting that, it's storing it in a variable called ID. And now, again, we're hitting the database, we're getting a task list, we're rendering edit.ejs, and this time we're passing in both the full task list and the single task that we want to edit. Yeah, Chan Po, you got to be real careful about your folders, especially when we start getting into these MVC structures. You're going to have to be super careful about where you put your folders at the root, or if we start nesting folders. Um, VS Code doesn't always make it the easiest to, to check that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, definitely be careful about your folder structure. Yep. Uh, even tap, what is the difference between a controller and a handler? Um, I'm not 100% sure what the difference in terminology is there. If anybody else knows, you're welcome to um, to chime in. It's a good question. All right, so let's check this. Render, to do tasks, pass that in. Okay, that should work fine. I don't think you're going to get a, um, I don't think you're going to get an error with that, but we'll see, I guess. Um, all right, so that's our first one. And then our second one is going to be delete. All right, so we'll do that one next. So our next method is going to be delete task. Boop. So delete task. And again, that'll be very similar. Uh, could you please open edits in, in routes like this? Is that the one? I'll push this up to GitHub in a, in a minute. Is that what you needed, Champo? <laughs> okay. Are you good? <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so for delete task, I'm going to go back to server.js and I'm going to find the delete, which is down here. So under where it says delete, I'm going to just grab this. Every Again, everything from the rec and res all the way down to the end of the function. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop it into my controller. And that should be fine. So what are we doing here? Again, we are grabbing the ID out of the route. And we're performing a, 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 a method here that you may have seen before or you may not. So again, we're, we're, we're referencing our model to do task and we're saying find by ID and remove. So what this is pretty cool, this is pretty cool. It's a very specific method. And I love this because it does exactly what you tell it to. It goes to the database, it finds an ID and it removes it. That's what it's for. So super simple does exactly what it says on the tin, nothing more, nothing less, finds an item by its ID, and yoinks it out of there. All right, and then in the end, again, we're redirecting back to the home page because we are done, you know, and we want, it, we want it to display the updated page. Thank you for the explanation there, Rascal. Uh, Big Shot, hey, welcome, Big Shot. Uh, sorry I'm getting here late, just curious. Have you implemented MVC, MVC from scratch or are you using a framework? Well, we're really just, so this is, I had an existing app that didn't have MVC structure. Um, and I'm just implementing, basically just changing folder structure. I'm not, you know, using anything fancy here. It's just plain, you know, JS Express, um, EJS, MongoDB, and just changing folder structure to adhere to the MVC structure, like guidelines, basically. 
You gotta love Mongoose, indeed. <laughs> All right. No worries, Big Shot. Yeah, we're keeping things simple here. Just learning the MVC concepts. We got, a, we got our lovely graphic here. We've been drawing stuff on it the whole time. It's good stuff. All right. So we've got our delete. That's our second one. And the next thing we just need is our update tasks. So update task is the next one. Update task. And again, I'm going to go back to my server.js and grab my update. Oh, I think I missed out. I think I missed my error handler as well. I'll have to fix that. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, update is right here. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So update, we hadn't grabbed, we actually hadn't grabbed update at all yet. So again, remember, because forms are weird and we're using forms and being baddies, it's basically just this post request right here. So we're going to grab that. I'm going to grab all, I'm going to uncomment this first. Sorry. I'm going to grab everything from the rec and res all the way to the end of this post. Grab that and drop it in. Okay. Try to catch them all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what are we doing here? So this is, this is for our updates. Again, we're pulling the ID out of the request, out of the path that we're passing in. We're pulling that ID out, assigning it to a variable. And again, we are using a super specific method here, which I love. I love it when you can be more specific rather than less specific, because that means you're less likely to make a mistake, which is just the best. I love, I love it when um, like structures are in place that can reduce the, my number of screw ups. Like that's just great when, when, when the code is actually looking out for me, right? When the code is looking out for me and I feel like it, you know, I feel like it appreciates me and is trying to help me be, you know, less uh, error prone. <laughs> Doesn't always work, but you know. All right. So anyway, we're doing find by ID and update. It finds an object or finds a, a document by its ID and updates it in the way that we tell it to. So we pass in the ID and then we pass in the information that was in the form. We pass that in, the title and the content, any updates that we made there, and update the existing item. So a new ID won't be created. It'll use the existing object's ID. Uh, and then basically just, if there's an error, send the error and redirect to the homepage. <laughs> no worries, Bombaloni. <laughs> Yeah, and piece of shoot mentioned, you know, instead of fudging it the way that we're doing it, you know, using a post request for a put and all that stuff and, and bypassing the form stuff that way, um, in the Traversy tutorial, there's a, another like a um, uh, piece of middleware that was installed called Method Override, which actually does it in a more structured way or more proper way, um, helps you override form methods so you can do whatever the heck you want, um, which is probably the better way to do it. But, you know, we're baddies. It's all good. All right, so we've got these all these in place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. It's probably still gonna error out. Oh, no, nope, it actually worked that time, nice. Um, okay, so let's double check. Go back to my routes here. So all of the routes are in place. You can see they turned yellow or gold because it was able to find them. So they're in place, it's able to find them. Welcome, Quattro Du, welcome. Um, it's able to find these routes. So let's go ahead and just clean up our server.js so we can essentially now we can get rid of all of these methods. So we can, so let's do, do it kind of one at a time here. We've got the delete method taken care of. That's done. We've got this, uh, this get in this post taken care of. That's done. Pew, 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 pew. And everything else is done in our server.js. So let's just take a pause here. I'm going to save this. And look how short our server.js has become now. There's, there's some extra stuff in here because, you know, we have stuff we're not using anymore. But, um, yeah, look how short this is. 
it's gone it's it's now it's down to 30 lines it's down to 30 lines in our server.js which is pretty wild right it was like you know triple or quadruple that before and so we've compartmentalized everything appropriately so now everything is in its place okay so there's one more thing we have to do um and the one last thing we have to do is make a change um, to our views in order to make sure that we're going to be hitting the correct routes when we pass results in. Um, Evan Shaw, about to start from the beginning. Are we going late tonight? Um, we're almost done. We're just doing the final changes and then we're going to um, sort of walk through the routes um, to better understand what they're doing. Um, yeah, we're just going to make a couple changes to our um, EJS files. Well, like two, I think. And then, um, then we'll walk through the routes and then we'll be done for the evening. Thanks for stopping in, Evan. Okay. So remember that our, in our routes, um, sorry, in our server.js, our home routes are all designated by just the plain slash. So that'll handle rendering the home page and when we add new items, when we add new content. However, everything else in the edit routes is listening for a route that starts with slash edit. So what I need to do is make sure that in my um, EJS files here, the appropriate routes are in place that will direct it, I guess, to the right place, right? So we'll, we'll see an example of this. All right, so let's just go to index.ejs and look at our routes. So most of the routes are gonna be um, either in forms or in, I'm gonna make this bigger so it's easier to see. All right, most of our routes are either gonna be in forms or in um, anchor tags, so like in hyperlinks. Um, so we have a form here and this one is a slash, it's a post and it is posting our, it's, it's uh, adding a new task. So this one is fine as is. That's what our router is listening for, just a slash. So that's all good. That's gonna to go to the right place. And then the other two things that it's listening for, or that the, the other two possibilities are um, the edit button and the delete button. So I think Ryan asked earlier, how is the ID getting passed in from our EJS file? Well, it's getting passed in as EJS. So whenever you click this, this um, edit button, it's grabbing the ID value of whatever you clicked on. Because when, when, we, when this page renders, when this page renders, when it, using EJS, it loops through every single possible item and tags it with an edit button and a delete button. And it adds hyperlinks to those, which contains the ID of whatever value it's on in the loop or whatever item it's on in the loop. It loops through each item, it tags them with the appropriate HTML elements, and it can also build out hyperlinks that contain certain elements about the data it's looping through. So I don't know if that makes sense, but we're, we, we have all the item details here. It loops through them, and as it does, it not only builds out HTML elements, it can also tag them with certain information that it knows about the items. So that's how that's working. Um, all right, so here we have for the edit button, which is um, this button right here, the green one. Our route here starts with slash edit. So that appears to be correct because that is what our route is listening for, slash edit. But what, 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 what might happen here if I try to click the X button right now, the delete button? This is, this is for the delete, so this, this should be going to our delete route. It should be removing the item from the database and removing it from the list. But what would happen here if I clicked on this um, hyperlink right now? Do we currently have a route that is listening for slash remove slash ID specifically? Yeah, 
exactly. It would say cannot get remove ID because we do not have a route for this. Right. For specifically this, everything in this route, we don't have a route for this. Now you might say, but in the routes folder, we, we do though. We do, we have, we have one that says remove ID. Hmm. But would it be able to get here in the first place? This is where it gets a little tricky. Where it gets a little tricky. So let's think about, let, let's follow this through. So I click on, <laughs> I, that's all, that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. That's why we're, that's why we're, that's why I said we're going to trace these routes through because you got to think about how it all, all the steps. Yeah. We got it. We got a little interim step in there. All right. So let's follow this through. I click on this. The first place it goes through. Actually, let's do one that works. Let, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's pretend I clicked on the edit button. We know this link will work. All right. So I click on this. The first thing it hits is my server.js. And where we set the routes, my server is listening. And if I get a route that starts with slash edit, it knows where to send it. Edit routes. And then when I go into edit routes, It hits this one right here, slash this get request slash ID and gets the edit page. Because as it goes through the routes, it's like it, it's proceeding um, between each element in the route. I'm trying to um, think about how to describe this. So like we have slash edit slash ID, right? So it starts, it looks at the first element in the route, which is slash edit. And it says, oh, I know what that is. And then it, so it says, all right, I did that. I routed here. And then it looks at the next element in the route, which is just the ID value. And it says, well, this is a get request and it contains the ID value. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it to the edit controller. And yeah, that's what we're going to do in just a minute. Nacho Kyle, you're exactly right. So you got to think about first, what is the server listening for? And does it even know which route router to pass it to? So in the case of our, sorry, in the case of our remove here, if I clicked on this, it would go to the server.js file and it would say, well, this isn't a, this isn't just a, a, a request for the root. It isn't that. And it isn't a request that starts with edit. So I don't know where to put this. I can't get it. I, I don't know. I, I'm lost. Where, where do I go? No, no. So what could we do to make sure, to make sure that we end up, that our request ends, our delete request ends up inside of the edit.js controller? What could we do? How could we edit this route to be correct in the way that we've written it? And basically what we're going to do is do what Nacho Call suggested there, which is just add edit to the beginning of the link. That's all we need to do, right? Because this is now going to hit the server. It's going to hit the server. It's going to say, oh, I recognize this. This route starts with edit. I can pass this into the edit routes right here. And then See, what kind of a request is this? I forget. I'm sorry. Um, edit. Oh, it's, and so then the next part of the request is it's a get request. And the next part of the URL is remove. So I recognize that and it ends with the ID. So it recognizes the next part of the route here. And so it can pass it to the controller and, and the delete task method. Right? So if we, tra if we trace this, if we want to trace this route through the entire app, we essentially have to take it in chunks and make sure that um, all of our routers 
can recognize each chunk of the route. I hope that makes some modicum of sense. And like Leon's app is even more like complex than this one. So I want to make sure that we spend, you know, a reasonable amount of time talking about these routes and tracing them through because you're going to have to kind of get a handle on it. Um, as we, you know, as we build more complex apps with more complex routes, there's lots of different ways that you can do routes. Um, since this one, since we were refactoring an existing app, I didn't really change the existing routes, but yeah, there's ways you could make this maybe, you know, more streamlined or different. But Nacho Cal's suggestion will work. We added edit here. And I think with that, this hyperlink should function properly now and write it, route us to the right place. So let's see. Let's just try it. See if I missed, I'm sure I probably missed something. There's a lot here, but uh, let's try it. And then if it works, I'll go ahead and push it up to GitHub so you all can pull it down if you want. Uh, Edit.ejs, let's check that one. That may already be fine. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's, yeah, that's a that's a good point. Let's, let's look at edit.ejs and make sure it's okay. So, over here on edit.ejs, we have, again, we have another form, but this form starts with edit. So it's going to allow us to edit an existing entry. And so again, this is gonna hit the server. It's gonna see the edit on this route that it's, hey, this, this route starts with edit. I know where to send this. I'm gonna send it up to the edit routes. And our edit routes are looking for a post request that contains an ID value, which we're sending it. And so that's gonna take us to the update task controller. So this one should be fine. This whole route is readable currently by the app and it's gonna end it up in the right place. Uh, okay, so let's look for another um, hyperlink. Uh, so here we have one, we have an anchor tag here. And this is on the cancel button. There's a cancel button on the edit. Um, and this should be fine. We won't have to change this because all it's doing is when you click cancel, it just redirects you back to the home page. So that's perfectly fine. It's just going to re-render the home page for us and that's going to behave as expected. We don't need a whole new route for that because we have an existing route that already works. So you don't have to create new routes for everything. You can reuse routes if they do exactly what you want. Uh, okay. Oh, and great. Yeah, we did. There is one here we need to change. Okay. So here again, we have edit for, you know, if you click the edit button, that's going to essentially make this, whatever one you clicked on, it's going to make it editable. Um, and then the last one here is the, is the delete button. And we just need to add the word edit at the start slash, there we go. And save. Okay. So all we really did in both of these files was make sure that our delete button had the correct path, that it started with slash edit slash and slash edit slash. That was really the only change that we needed to make here. That's right. I, was, I said earlier there was two changes and I forgot the second one. So I appreciate that. Good catch there, Gabo. All right, so we're saved. I think we're saved. Okay, let's just see if it works. And if it does, then I'll go ahead and do a push. Okay, so let's click edit. Whoop. Oh, I know what I did. <laughs> I know what I did. I know where we got an error. I it was one of those things I, I, I told myself I would remember to do it and then I didn't do it. Okay, but let's, let's see if we can figure out what this error is telling us. Any ideas? To do task is not defined. Ha ha! Yep, piece of shoot, got it. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And that was one of those things that it was in the back of my head and then I just didn't do it. All right. So inside of our controller, yeah. <laughs> inside of our controller, when looking at home.js, the first thing we had to do was we had to import 
our model, right? Because we're talking, our controller is the brain of our app, right? The controllers are thinking for us. They're doing the logic. The controllers are helping us interface with our model, which then interfaces with our database, right? That's why we need to make sure that our controller recognizes our model. So all we need to do is just grab this require statement from our home.js and drop it into edit.js. Yep. Gosh, I literally had that in the back of my head and I was like, I need to remember to do that. And then I didn't do it. So <laughs> Rascal says, ain't that nice that we can easily read exactly what file to jump to. <laughs> yeah. Duplicate names can, ma can make uh, things rather challenging. Okay. Now I need to find which, uh, which window I had pulled up. Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's try this again. All right. I'm just going to start over. Okay. Let's see if we can edit this now. There we go. Much better. So now every time I click on edit, right, it's passing the ID of the item through the route and that changes the way that our EJS ends up rendering. So real quick, I just want to like talk this through one more time. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. Okay. So I click on a button, me, I click on a button in the browser. I click on the edit button. That sends the ID up through the router. The router processes that and sends it to the controller. The controller passes the ID to the model. And actually, well, it doesn't pass it to the model until I actually hit submit. So I guess never mind. Let's let's change this a little bit. So uh, passes it up to the controller. And then that actually changes the way the view renders. That's what's happening here. So I click edit and the, the view will render differently depending on which edit button I clicked, right? That depends on the item ID. So that's passed to the view and then that's passed back to me. So we're following different, slightly different paths each time, depending on what action is performed. It's kind of wild. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun thought exercise to think about as you're building this stuff, all the different paths that can be taken and the different um, elements of our MVC structure that are hit. Um, am, yeah, am I still going? Did the screen go back for black for anybody else? Yeah, I hope it works. So it might be a memory issue. Um, maybe if you're like, um... okay, good. No, it's good. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. Like maybe you have like a, a, a memory issue or something like that, or your display driver crashed. Um, that happens occasionally. Yeah, so that's what's happening. It, and that's, I would say this is a pretty good exercise to do is to, when you click on something, try to trace the route through your app and see exactly what happens, what, what elements are hit, what elements are not, um, and see what happens. Yeah, so we should be good now. This all should be working. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and push this up to GitHub. So git add boop, git commit m, um, I always have a memory issue. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't quite pushed it yet. One second. All right. And get push. There we go. Now you can, now you should be able to grab down the whole thing if you would like to see the finished code with the routes in place and compare it to the original. Um, all right. So if I collapse these folders now, we can see that on the surface, it doesn't look all that much different from the original. However, the main savings here is how much simpler our server.js file is now. Right? There's hardly anything in it because all of that stuff has been offloaded to our additional routes and controllers. <laughs> and again, this is use this is not maybe not such a um, a necessity on such a small app. This is a very simple and small app. But imagine again, imagine if you had say 
five or 10 pages on your app, each with different routes and each having a slightly different display, right? Different things to be displayed at different times, different user actions. As somebody was saying earlier, user specific pages, like pages that are maybe configurable by the user, all of those things are gonna be need to be passed through in routes, handled by controllers. And in that case, for something like that, MVC is gonna be an absolute necessity. So uh, any other questions here? And for those of you who are watching this later on VOD or on YouTube, and you may not have you know, access to the links in chat, I will show you the repo. It's right here. Uh, to do, oh, come on. To do MVC refactor stream is the finished repo um, for all you YouTubers who would like to see this later. Oh, good, Emma Me Cotton. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hello, future peoples. <laughs> Four five says, I'm just shocked my code is still working so far. Oh, don't be shocked. You did great. Uh, which folders would you host on Heroku to make it a client app? Well, um, you're pretty much going to need everything. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to push your .env file, um, but every, you're going to need everything else pretty much. You, can, you, you would set your database string in Heroku directly, um, but you're going to need everything else. Uh, basically, well, okay, everything else except for node modules as well. Uh, JM says, oh, uh, Nachikal says, I'm, I'm going to try to use fetch methods to hit router.put and router.delete, which me like, yeah, absolutely. Modify this, take this. And I love it when people do that. I want this code to be, this code should not be considered a golden finished product, right? You should take this, tear it apart and build something of your own and then tag me on Twitter and show me how cool it is. That's because I want to see it. Um... JM says, are you able to code all of this after Leon's videos and reading through the materials once? These concepts make sense while I watch and code along with Leon and reading materials, but I cannot code all of this from scratch the way it's being done here. So absolutely not. Um, I don't code this stuff from scratch. When I was building this, when I was building this, I built this, uh, when, when the heck did I build this? uh like last night i think when, i don't know when I, whenever i built this um i literally had leon's code that he used in class which is right here this is leon's code i had it hidden by I, we didn't have to reference it but i had it hidden behind here the entire time this is the literally the code that he went through in class i had these two things side by side i had you know th this the product that i was working on this the, my to-do app and his code side by side and I was literally like matching up and solving errors as I went. So no, not absolutely not from scratch. I hardly ever do things from scratch. Most of the time I'm taking Legos and that's why I recommend that you do that with my projects is just keep passing the Legos along, right? You take the Legos out of the things like Leon's code that you can use, copy and paste, dump them in there, get errors, and then troubleshoot those errors until it works. <laughs> and then build something unique. So absolutely not. You should not be like thinking that you, don't be thinking that you should be able to code all of this from memory or from scratch. I work as a dev, like I, I, I'm currently a dev is my day job and I copy and paste so much all the time. It's actually recommended because if you're copying and pasting from something that works, then you're less likely to have like silly errors, right? because you're copying and pasting from something that already works, so it's already correct. So I copy and paste all day, every day. I got the fastest, like, control C, control V. I think, like, my my fingers, like, my muscles of, like, my my pinky and, like, my ring finger here on my left hand, I think they're, they're like, they're, like, super strong from, like, hitting those, hitting those keys. So, ah, oh, Champo, you got it working? That's so cool. Nice job. So, yeah, control C, control V are your friends. Use them, build with the Legos that way. Uh, do you, uh, Gravio says, do you just pick from old projects to build new ones? Yeah, all the time. Most of what I do is that. 
is, you know, a lot of what Leon is giving us is foundation, right? A lot of what Leon is giving us is foundation for us to build on. So you take what he's given us and you add to it. You tear it apart. You take out chunks and you put them into other things. You, you, you're, you build Frankenstein code. Um, and then eventually you start to see the patterns and you start to learn how to implement it yourself. Um, Gabo says, I have a git doubt, but I'm a noob at this. I forked your repo and cloned it. Um, now, if I want to play around with CSS and so on, if I commit and push, am I messing with your repo? No, because you have your own fork. So unless you did a pull request and I approved it, you would not be um, hurting my code at all. So you, 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 if you forked it first, you have your own fork, you should be fine. Yeah, you're all good. No, Jam, that's, you're totally fine. Um, I encounter so many errors and I get so frustrated. And I mean, you didn't see me when I was, when I was building this original, you all, whenever I'm streaming, all you see is my finished product. You see my success. You never see my failures. You never see me like figuring out like, what the frick is this error message? I do not understand. And like frantically Googling for a couple hours until I figure something out. You don't see any of that. But that's that's a real part of the process. So you know, it's like a, it's like Instagram or social media. You only see people's successes, right? You you only see them on their best day. You never see them on their worst day when they have the flu or you know, a pink eye or something like that. And so you never see you know my coding struggles because I'm streaming finished products. Yeah, Nachiko has some great advice there. The more you repeat and make your own modifications and improvements, the more it gets into your head. Absolutely. And that's what Leon is recommending with like this MVC lecture. I know it sounds really like, oh, why do I got to freaking do a bunch of slides and like a lecture? Like why? What is the point? But the more that you, you know, practice this stuff and just drill the concepts and the more that you... Um, if you're able, the more that you're able to discuss this with other people and teach it to others, the better you will understand it. And believe me, it works. <laughs> I speak from experience here. Unicorn says, thanks, mine. This was cool. I can't believe I was coding ahead. Oh, yeah. Way to go. Fastest control C, control V in the West. You better believe it. WJS says, so would it be okay to use Traversy's CRUD for the 100-hour project as a base? Absolutely. If you implement your own idea on top of that, if it, I mean, if you were to just say, like, the Traversy tutorial is my 100-hour project and that's it, then no, that would not be okay. But if you take that as a base, like the authentication and the structure and that sort of thing, absolutely, and, and build something unique on top of it, yeah, totally. That crud, I was bugging out. <laughs> do I still post my code wars on GitHub public? No, I do not. <laughs> Tell me about the worst day. I've learned to Netflix and chill when nothing works and then return with fresh eyes to see the freaking typo. Absolutely, you have to walk away and that's extremely hard. Because you want to keep like, you know, banging your head against it until you solve the problem, right? When you get an error, it's so frustrating. And all you want to do is, you know, keep running it and not understanding why it's not working and just keep trying and trying and trying. And you just got to walk away for 20 minutes and like, I don't know, empty the dishwasher or fold some laundry and then come back and look at it with a fresh angle. Champo, you went skydiving today? Holy cow. That's way more than I did today. <laughs> Diane Hua says, don't forget to use Windows key plus V for the Windows clipboard to make your life easier. Yeah, the Windows clipboard. If, you, if you're on a Windows machine, you can do uh, Windows V to see a, a larger clipboard. Absolutely. Four or five. I'm going to go walk my dog and decompress. Absolutely. Yeah, do that. I'm sure the dog will appreciate it as well. 
<laughs> very that's a very cool birthday gift there shampoo that's awesome any other questions really great uh some really great questions there enter diffuse mode yeah that's what it is right learning how to learn Yeah, Jam, and keep in mind, I'm already a developer, okay? Like, <laughs> so there's a, you know, there's a different, there's a different frame of reference there. And, and you know, be aware of that. I, I'm, I'm already a developer. I kind of have, I, I don't, I, I'm not a JavaScript developer. That's true. I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a web developer, but I have certain skills that help me, you know, maybe like just process things a little more quickly and, and troubleshoot quickly and that kind of thing. So that's not to say I'm like, you know, God's gift to developers or anything, but there are certain things you pick up over time, which can help you in general when you're, when you're approaching these projects and you'll get that with time. It just takes time. <laughs> so be kind to yourself, right? How are my foster kittens? Oh, they're doing so great. Yeah. I have two little adorable foster kittens. I don't really have, I need to take pictures of them so I can show the, you know, show the pictures on stream. Um, yeah, they're so cute. They're like, Two little black and white little little foster kitten babies and they're so sweet i love them so much they need names somebody better spend somebody better spend some freaking channel points on a foster kitten name but uh, of course you can you can wait until i show them to you as a picture and then you can decide but somebody's got a name though somebody's got to name those little babies if you you know check out my channel points rewards and see if that's something you want to blow your channel points on it i think i think it's worth it personally uh devquest says uh oh sorry uh i don't want to skip let's see ba, 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 ba. that cat says thank you again for another amazing class is the next one on sunday yes so leon is that's a great point leon is having office hours this sunday um and because leon is having office hours this sunday i imagine my stream will get pushed back a little bit i mean i don't know how long office hours will last but they're usually two to three hours so I will be going live whenever Leon is done. So whenever he wraps up, I'll go live. Um, and you're welcome to join me or catch the VOD later. It's all good either way. So I'll just be going live whenever Leon wraps up. Because I'll be in office hours, believe me. Uh, DevQuest says, do you know any other languages just SQL? So really just SQL before 100 devs. I didn't know any other languages um, because I learned everything I know on the job. I was fairly limited in my scope of what I had picked up. I really, ne I never made the effort to learn any sort of coding outside of work up until now. Um, so yeah, just SQL exclusively and some like Excel, you know, some Excel macro stuff, VBA, um, but not a ton. I didn't really, I didn't understand the logic. I was more of just like Googling for stuff to build macros, like without understanding why any of it worked. I was, I was really very much in the Lego stage because I didn't understand the fundamentals. Um, so yeah, just really just SQL as far as the logic goes. Yeah, probably not. So the the office hours on Sunday are probably going to be fairly long just because Leon's going to be going over essentially MVC, this code right here. So you can see that this code is longer than the code that we just went over, right? There's more components. Um, there's more to it. There's some, there's, there is client side JavaScript in this code. So I imagine this, that might take a while to get through all the way. Mommy says, I got points. <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. Indeed, yes. Before 100 devs, I had a very particular set of skills. One language. <laughs> Ashoka says, I used Java before, but I stuck with his cousin JavaScript. I feel like, like Java and JavaScript are like six cousins or something ridiculous. Very far removed from each other. I'm using the sources you mentioned from SQL as well and some Tableau. Really interested in continuing with this. Yeah, SQL and Tableau are great resources to have if you have the bandwidth to pursue them. 
right? Like Leon keeps saying, don't, you know, don't stretch yourself too thin, especially right now. I think SQL, if you're gonna learn anything, I think SQL is great. Um, it may not be super glamorous, but it is literally everywhere. Like literally everywhere in the business world, there is SQL. And so at least having a cursory understanding, even if it's just watching my VOD on intro to SQL, um, even if that's all you do, that will be a great prep for you, um, you know, when you encounter SQL in the wild, so to speak. Uh, MME says, do you notice that when learning a second language, you mix up the syntax and methods? It happened to me when learning JavaScript after Python. I have a hard time remembering which method or syntax is from which language. Yeah, so I do that a lot with, um, like, so SQL is extremely different from JavaScript. It is like extremely different. It's, de it's, a, it's a, even a different type of language. It's declarative. Um, so it works in a completely different way than JavaScript does. So that kind of prevents me from mixing the two up. However, the one place where I do mix them up is in comments. So SQL uses um, SQL uses dash dash for like single line for like single line comments like that. Like that's a comment, a single line comment in SQL. So I do that a lot. I'll put dash dash when I'm trying to do a comment. <laughs> she had a secret <laughs> Go deep, not wide. Indeed. Uh, eventually we should be able to code with SQL and Mongo in one project in one project. Yeah. Um, I imagine you probably wouldn't do that very often. Um, like Rascal mentioned, I mean, yeah, you can mix them. Um, and you might really only encounter that if you were migrating data from one place to another, like one data source to another. Um, but that's fairly rare that that happens, you know, like as far as, far as like changing types in that way. Um, generally if there's, if you have a stack, you're going to stick with it. Um, at least in a single project. Okay. You, and why stop there? Use six different databases. <laughs> Just to make it really hard on yourself. Yeah. Okay. Any last questions before we find somebody to raid? See who's online. Uh, Sirius says, I learned a bit of SQL in a boot camp a few years ago, and we use SQLize heavily with it. Any idea if that's still a popular ORM? So, really, all I really the kind of coding that I do at work is very like it's pure SQL. We don't, I don't use any sort of ORMs or anything like that. Um, it's it's just straight up, straight up raw SQL. Not, no, no sugar coating, no, you know, no, nothing to make it easier. It's just pure straight up SQL. So, um, yeah, I don't really know much. I actually don't know anything, um, about those, you know, any types of wrappers or anything like that. Straight up PL SQL. All right, any suggestions? <laughs> Sirius says, ah, yeah, pure SQL is, um, no, thank you. <laughs> I actually love pure SQL. It's so, um, I don't know, it's so readable. It's so very straightforward. It does, you know, it pretty much does what it says it's doing. I like that. Yeah, we got Nick Wan. Yeah, exactly. Um, Nick Wan, Techie Girl. Yeah, Polarin. Oh, let's see, I don't... What was Polarin doing? Polarin, I'm just trying to remember. Let's see. Oh, are they building something? They look like they're building something. Like, legit. Until you have to make joints. Oh, man, joints are my bread and butter. Yeah. I can do joints in my sleep. They look like they're building something. I kind of want to see what they're building. Workshop setup stream. Oh, that might be fun. Let's let's just raid them. And let's see what they're doing. I'm just curious. 
<laughs> good i'm glad you i'm glad you're a little calmer there jm yeah just take it take it you know take it at your own pace take your time you'll be fine i'm sure thanks for coming today i appreciate everybody attending and uh I hope we I hope we feel a little bit more comfortable about routes now. Um, feel free to just take my code, pull it apart, build whatever you want. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to link one more time. I'm going to link the 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 repo in case you didn't catch it. And we will go ahead and do a raid. All right, I'll see you all again on Sunday after office hours. Woo! Okay. All right, I'll see y'all again soon.